This is the historic Cambridge Hotel in upstate New York. It's set in stunning countryside, a few hours drive from Manhattan. The hotel has 16 bedrooms and a large restaurant and has had its doors open for almost 150 years. Welcome to the Cambridge Hotel. Ex-military man and local lawyer, John Imhoff, persuaded his family to help him buy the hotel in 2007. I remember sitting in my hot tub, smoking a cigar, drinking bourbon, and life was good. And I wanted to take my wife someplace nice for dinner. So I said to her, why don't we buy the Cambridge Hotel, and then we'd have a place to go. He must have hit me at a weak moment because I said, sure. Yeah. With zero hospitality experience between them. Which one is A27? I don't, I don't know the numbers. The hotel currently falls shockingly short of guest expectations. It's dingy, nasty. and there's hair all in through here. All over these pillows. Be nice if we had a remote control. There's just gobs of hair. We've had remote control since when, the 70s? I'm not sleeping here. We're checking no out. No way. It's bad. When I bought the hotel, I didn't intend to be a hands-on owner. But I am always at the hotel doing something. One person has to be in charge. Got 84 emails. 17 from John. John is a control freak. How are we doing on that chicken? <laughs> it's working hard. We can do better, chef. It's ready to murder him. With this menu, there's a lot of restrictions to it. Our budget's really tight. The creativity's kind of gone out the window. Britt, um, all the rooms clean? Yeah. All the rooms coming in. I am currently the general manager. Excellent. I'll finish this one. But John takes away my control. I have no control. But General John's hands-on approach isn't working. Nobody wants to stay and the hotel is losing thousands of dollars every month. John wants to put every penny that we have into this hotel, and that is something I am no longer willing to do. We are $750,000 in debt, but failure is not an option, and I don't intend to fail at the hotel. Unless I can fix things, and fast, John and Tina will lose their business and their home. If Gordon Ramsay can't fix us, who the hell else can? Wow, the real sense of grandeur. Definitely some history here. Cambridge Hotel, established 1885, home of Pyla Mode. I've been across America, I did not realize it came from here. Good morning. Good morning, welcome to the Cambridge Good to Hotel. See you. Uh, Gordon, and your first name, sorry? My name is Brittany, I'm the Brittany. manager. I have you in room mm -hmm. 117. That is $105 mm -hmm. during the weekday and $135 on the weekend. Okay. I think Gordon's first impression of the hotel is going to be, what the fuck are these people doing? The Cambridge Hotel, RIP. Yeah. Seriously? Yes. It's died, you mean? No, rest in peace is the ghosts that uh, live here. We are haunted. Oh, come on. There's a little girl who supposedly haunts the hotel. Alice. Alice. Oh my good yeah. God, she yeah. looks like something out of The Exorcist. She was four years old in 1913. When she died? But I believe in ghosts at the hotel. I absolutely believe in them. I'm gonna go yeah. up the stairs. They're creaky as well. And, oh God. Uh, are they the owners? No, I don't know who they are. Those have been are. here. This place is littered with freaky pictures. Yes. What's upstairs there? That is our third floor. Why is that roped off? Do because it is not accessible to our guests. Is that where the ghosts are? Well, that's where people say they are. If he goes up on the third floor, he is going to freak out. This is your room. Oh my God, bloody hell. Look at the wallpaper. What's the uh, post up there? What is that? <laughs> Just there. So there's no handcuffs? No. <laughs> no, okay. So, so it's not a sex thing? <laughs> Which is a really like, weird thing no. to have in the bed. I know. So you stand there. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, well. Shit. <laughs> Welcome shit. to the Cambridge Hotel. Thank you. Christ almighty. I, I am not going to forget this day in a hurry. Horrible linen. Rough and nasty. Holes. Look at that. And the bed doesn't even fit the base. Honestly, I've seen better linen inside hospitals. Horrible. My bedroom is dated and uncomfortable. How could anyone think this was good enough for paying customers? Bye-bye. Can I meet the owners? Yes, I'll be right back with the owners. Look how dead they are. Gordon. 
This is Tina and John Tina. Imhoff. I'm nice Tina. to see you. Nice to Gordon. see you. Nice to meet you, sir, John. Likewise, good to see you both. It's quite amazing when you drive up and you see this sort of statue of the building. It's... Yes, sir. Isn't it beautiful? It's stunning until we get inside. <gasps> Hotel experience prior to this was what? Very, very little. I mean, no. I was. No, none. I... None. So, year one, what was the profit? We lost about $350,000 the first year. Year two? $250,000. Profit? Loss. Loss. So we're in for $600,000 within 24 months of business. Who's funding this? Well, um, my mom and dad have Us. put in several hundred thousand dollars. Wow. Um, our children. Our children. Your children. Yes. Yes. Shay has put about $25,000 on credit cards. Shay is your... The oldest daughter. Oh, that's your oldest daughter, right. It's a chef's um, significant other. OK. And so my youngest daughter uh, just lent us $10,000. Your youngest daughter. She's in college. Was your house on the line next? Yes, it is up for sale. And we would live here. We would move on to the third floor. Where do you draw the line and say, stop, this is not working? You're standing there like proud cock, very confident, very happy, and like nothing's gone wrong, but taking money from your daughter that hasn't even started I would one never foot ask her. on the path of her career? I believed that we would be able to turn it around. Oh, no, but John, I'm sorry. Your parents' money, your family's money, your daughter's money. I, I do have a positive attitude. There's a difference between sounding positive and sounding full of crap. He doesn't know me, and, and he doesn't know the situation. I'm a military guy. I'm not going to take Chef Ramsay's bullshit. I've just met the owners of the struggling Cambridge Hotel and discovered they've borrowed money from their kids to stay open. I, I do have a positive attitude. There's a difference between sounding positive and sounding full of crap. Unbelievable. Tina, how do you manage? I don't know how I manage. And I was very close to running away several times. Wow. Seriously? Unreal. Thank you. I've been frustrated for years with him not listening to me. When somebody doesn't listen to you for a while, you just give up. What is it about John that's driven his wife and potential guests away? I need to watch the general in action. What are you doing with a Hoover? Welcome. Nice to see you. Sorry about the uh, owner walking through with a Hoover. Are you joining us for a sleepover or are you joining us for dinner? Dinner. Excellent. Damn it. Kim, you tell me I'll help you. John keeps himself constantly busy, but he's busy doing all the wrong things. His non-stop fussing and fidgeting is killing the hotel's atmosphere. What's he doing? Oh, my God. The tables in the bar might be clean, but I've got an eerie feeling the food's going to be filthy. Only one way to find out. Hello, sir. How are you? Good. My name's Philip. I'll be your server. You wanna... Thank you. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> um, what would you recommend? Well, the soup du jour today is a uh, vegetarian lentil. Vegetarian lentil? Yep. And what was the soup du jour yesterday? It was also the vegetarian lentil. Oh, so soup every two days? Uh, actually, it's longer than two days. Right. Um, I'll go for the pork and beans. Duck comfy? Yeah. Um, pile of mode. OK. OK, I think we're done. OK. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chef. Thank you. Chef, order's up. OK, thank you. Get him going, brother. Get him going. I think that Gordon is going to love the food. Chef Rich is great. We put out excellent food. Thank you, Chef. Wow, look at that. This is the pork and beans. Holy mackerel. <laughs> It's cold in the middle. Both of you, yeah? Just touch that meat there, please. Ice yeah, cold. Sorry. Touch that. Ice I mean, cold. I can see why we've got RIP on the front of the fucking reception. Those are two medium rares, right? Scooters, chuck them in the oven, please. Chef, ice cold in the middle. Tell them it's a sous vide product. We cook it to order. It disappoints me a little bit that we are boiling bags, putting stuff in the microwave. I wish we could actually cook with fresher food. Your duck hunt feet. And Chef said the pork and beans was a sous vide product and it's cooked to order. Sous vide? Oh, cooked in a bag? Yes. They're frozen. Frozen? Yes. And this plate that's frozen? I, I think that's a sous vide product as well. Do we have anything that is homemade? Are the apple pies made here? The apple pies are made here. OK. Can you hurry with the desserts, please? Sure, thank, thank you. So far, everything has been terrible. Surely the hotel's signature dish is going to be better. How's the apple pie? 
Just tell them we don't want to complain anymore. I'm sorry, but this is the home of Apple Pie Alamo. But if it's the home of Apple Pie Alamo, it should be really badass. Stay away from me. It looks like it was bombing on the top of it. I'm bringing it home for my daughter. Okay. Wow. Paella mode, Gordon? So this is it. This is the That is the famed... paella mode. Shit, this plate is absolutely roasting in the center. Has it been microwaved? It has. The apples are raw. If there's one thing I was expecting was a decent apple pie, and that is gross. I need to find out who's responsible for the terrible food here. Hello. If Chef Ramsay criticizes Chef's food... Where is the... Where is Chef? I think Rich will blow up because Rich does take things personally. I don't know where to start, to be honest. What the fuck is going on? Well, tell me what you, what you don't like. Can you be a little bit more constructive? Shall we start from the pork and beans? Stone fucking cold. It's a sous vide product. So you don't even cook that? No, it's sous vide. No. And can you cook? Yes. So why buy that in? Uh, price? You buy a store-bought, frozen piece of pork, boiled in a bag, and serve it to me stone cold in the center. You're not even cooking. So you're just too lazy to do it? That's not true, I am not lazy. This menu could be run now without you being here. Yes, it's the way I designed it. It's the way you designed it. So you are lazy then? I'm not lazy. If Gordon calls me lazy one more time, it could cause a problem. Might be going back to Britain in a body bag. I just tasted the food at the Cambridge Hotel and it was awful. I think it's because the chef is lazy but he's adamant he's not. That menu stinks of laziness. I'm not lazy. I'm here 80, 90 hours a week. Yeah, you can't call yourself an executive chef. Come on. Do you know it's store bought? I did. Why would you employ a chef that two thirds of the menu is store bought? I, I think Gordon believes that I'm incompetent in running a hotel, but what I'm doing is right. Your hotel became famous for this apple pie, right? And this is the dish that is trying to stop your house being put up for sale to keep this place going. But I'm just, what I'm trying to say is there are so many basics wrong. I could fucking cry. I could seriously cry. I could cry too. And look at the apples. Look, the apples are raw, not even baked. And I could scream when I see that. I'm this dish was invented here. And there's thousands of restaurants across the globe that have copied what you originated. Have you any idea how lucky you are? And it resolves to that. Soggy, undercooked, soaking wet, piss pie. Can I have a quick word with you for two sure. seconds, please? I'm struggling to understand what's going on here. I need to hear a woman's perspective. John is smart in what he does as a lawyer. Mm -hmm. He's awful here. I can't get it in his head. But between the two of them, they're about to take your fucking house down. Him and John go back and forth. When I give suggestions, it's pretty much, you know, up, and then it's pushed aside. And then John is making decisions. You're about to lose your house. I know. And he says, we are going until I haven't got another penny to put in it. He's never run a business before. No, no. And he's never done anything in his life but be a lawyer and a soldier. That is it. He may have won lots of battles, but he's fucking definitely losing this war, let me tell you. Finally, a stranger is seeing what I've been seeing. And I'm hoping that John is going to take something from this and either we're going to make it go or we're going to shut it up. I've seen about as much as I can stand at this hotel. The outdated rooms, the cheap linens, and the prepackaged food. How have things got this bad? I've got to get some answers. What's wrong with this place and who's to blame? The problem is here is that we have to ask to do something. We're not allowed to make a decision. We're not yeah. allowed to make a General decision. General manager, executive chef. Yeah. We have to run everything through everything. John. Make sure everything... What? We have we to have meetings. John's a lawyer. And so why do you have to ask someone that doesn't know how to run a fucking bath, let alone That's a hotel? What he but he took over more control. That's when I put up my hands. OK, you want to run it? You run it. It's fucking soulless. It's littered with shit antiques that are broken. It's got horrendous pictures all over the fucking place. Disgusting rooms. Food that comes out of a fucking bag. I, I don't control any of that stuff. I'm not making decisions. I told Rich that I thought we should cut our food costs. Have you got the respect from the owners to do your job properly, yes or no? No. Britt, I have absolutely... Could you talk? I definitely do not make the decisions that I think I should be able to, though. She's telling you that, and that's what the problem is. 
It's not the fucking ghost, John, that's scaring the regulars away. It's you. A chef needs to be a fucking chef, and a general manager needs to general manage. I'm not a micromanager. When we first started this place, and the, the ideas I had were all shot, shot down, that's the kind of stuff. Now it's coming out. You've handicapped the chef, the general manager is functional, and you're calling all the fucking shots. I'm not calling the shots. You're a lethal weapon. Well, you, you may think that. No, I don't think that. I fucking know that. No, just what? heard from your wife, your general manager, your chef. That I'm controlling. Over control. I, I... You're like a little fucking Hitler around here. And if you don't stop doing what you're doing, you'll lose your family and the business. I finally got to the truth at the Cambridge Hotel. You're like a little fucking Hitler around here. The place is sinking because John the owner's meddling ways have made everyone's jobs impossible. I'm not a micromanager. They're not puppets. They're your team. And if you don't stop doing what you're doing, you'll lose your family and the business. Work it out, Your Honor. I'm going to bed. Good night. This is all stuff that I've been trying to get across to John for 20 years. What's the matter? Hmm. What's the matter? Seriously? Yeah. What's the matter? With you right now. You have a headache again or? <sighs> I've had it. I have had it. I was feeling squashed. And I don't have to feel that way anymore. I'm not going to feel that way anymore. Bedtime, and I'm not looking forward to sleeping in a haunted room. I've never seen such a delusional owner and staff that are so desperate to do their jobs. And now I've got to sleep in this. Christ almighty. Oh, fuck. What was that? This bed is so uncomfy. What is that noise on the stairs? I had a sleepless night, and believe me, it wasn't a ghost that kept me awake. It was something far more frightening. Time to give John and Tina a wake-up call. After you, please. Hi, guys. Okay. Hi. Hi. These are the guests that have been staying in the hotel. Um, I've asked them uh, in my room this morning just to help you understand how difficult it has become for guests to actually stay here. Who would like to go first? I took a shower this morning and used a, what I thought was a clean towel, and there was hair in the towel. Mm -hmm. yeah. The bed yeah. itself was actually very uncomfortable. Yeah. 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 yeah, we left our room last night and couldn't lock our door, so we had to leave our hotel room door unlocked. Hand on hearts, how many of you would return here? No. no. The way no. 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 Anyone? Mm. Not unless you yeah. pay me to stay here. John and Tina, are you aware of so many problems inside these rooms? Some of them we are aware of, yes. Some of, some some of them. them, yeah. What I'm more pissed off about than anything is that last night I went downstairs. In fact, let me show you. It's easier if I do it this way. I forgot my toothbrush. I went down to the car. And I cannot believe this. Just watch carefully. I went outside. So, stepped down the stairs. And all of a sudden, damn, I've locked myself out. I've got no keys to get back in. The bloody front door is not locked at night. No, yeah, we have even in the dining room this morning. Now, there's no night porter. There's no security. And then, shock horror. I went behind the reception desk, and every one of your keys is hanging replicated in the pigeon box. Wow. That's terrible. Uh, <laughs> Duplicate key for every room. Oh, my God. Credit card details, personal cell numbers, it's all there. That's, scary. That's, That's really scary. scary. That's scary to think scary. about. It. Why is the door not locked? There's no good reason. So you got we have, we haven't out. locked it in a long time, though. No, about two years. In this community, you have eight major burglaries within the last 12 months. Three registered, 
sex offenders locally in this community. I mean, how does that make you feel that we were sleeping in this hotel last night and each and every one of us was vulnerable? Yeah, yeah, right that's, that's not okay. No, you're responsible. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Um, thank can, you I, can you stay here with me? And uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Thank you. John and Tina have broken the first law of hospitality. Keep your guests safe. John's so busy interfering with other people's jobs, he's lost sight of what really matters. I'm not joking around on the burglaries. Oh, I The sex I, offenders. I know, I know. Your reputation could be over in seconds on one incident in this hotel. Because you're not going to walk around this town as a prosecutor, a chief lawyer, and then be responsible for a serious rape taking place inside here. Wake up. You're running a business, not a courtroom. And they're here for an experience, not a fucking sentence. Sell the place, because you're not fit to run it. Sell it, because this is madness. Sell it, and keep your house. Worth it. I've just discovered that John has lost sight of the big picture at the hotel. The bloody front door is not locked at night, and his incompetence uh, is putting uh, the guest's safety in jeopardy. That's not okay. If John doesn't change his interfering ways, he and Tina will lose their home and be forced to live on the hotel's top floor. It's time to find out what it's like up there. Hello? Anyone there? Hello? It's like someone. Oh, shit. Bloody hell. Who in the hell would put this here? This really is hotel hell. Oh, my God. What happened to our hands? This place is genuinely disturbing. Freaky. That top floor's no place to live. But I've got a plan. If I force John to see how different things could be here, maybe he'll get the message. So I'm going to need Brittany's help. If we can prove to John and Tina, if you take charge and you hold those reins, that you can make money mm -hmm. for this hotel, trust me, they back off and you step up. Mm -hmm. OK? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I hear it. I'm hoping to prove to John that it can be busy, it can be fun here. Tonight, we are serving. We are doing a bar night. Oh my God, this is terrible. We're not a rowdy kid doing shots, going crazy bar. It's a party, party, party. We're going to do drink specials. We can get people in the rooms. A ladies' night tonight. Have to pack the place. Thanks, bye. This is the first step to change. As last minute preparations take place in the bar and the kitchen, there's a new energy in the hotel. This is Chef Rich's chance to prove he can cook with fresh ingredients. Nothing out of a bag. Please, no preheated, all fresh, yeah? All fresh. Great. Rich, yes. it's your responsibility to teach these guys how to cook. Absolutely. Not to reheat. Is that right, Scoot? Yeah. Yeah? Absolutely. He's just started culinary school. Oh, good man. And who inspired you to be a chef? I had relatives everywhere pushing me to join the culinary field because I wasn't physically able to do any other things, like sports and stuff. Yeah. What's the disability? I've had two heart surgeries and two back surgeries. How old are you? 19. Yeah, you move fast. That's a big asset. And you haven't been taught properly yet, have you? No. That's incredible. So what do you want to be when you grow up? Um, I would like to have my own bakery and uh, be a professional executive pastry chef. Wow. We're ready to roll. Brittany has gotten the word out that she's in charge tonight, and people are flocking into the hotel. There you go. OK, let me ring them up. Ladies' night is going really well tonight. There's a mixed crowd of ages here, and everyone hanging out together and having fun. What can I do to help you? Nothing. Get out. 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 Right. Night's going great, but I don't think John quite understands how important nights like this are, because I don't think this guy gets the message. John, I want to show you something. Come with me.
thing spooks me every time I come in here. Here's the situation. Downstairs, currently, there's a buzz. And that got put together by your general manager, Brittany. That's her vision. But if you carry on running the Cambridge the way you have been, this is what you're going to have. This is what's your destiny, this, on your own. So stay up here and sort of enjoy your surroundings. I'll come and get you when I'm ready. All right. He's so wrong, he has no clue. And I'm, I'm thinking, when he comes back up, he's going to ask me what did I learn, and I'm going to say to him, I really didn't learn anything. It's locked. Damn it. I've locked John, the hotel's interfering owner, on the top floor. I need to demonstrate to him how well the hotel can run without him. I'm not happy sitting there waiting because I know my guests are downstairs having a party and I kind of felt that I needed to be downstairs. Gordon wants me to sit up here and, and, you know, and think that he's all right about all this stuff and damn it, he's wrong about me being a control freak. With ladies night in full swing, chef's fiance Hi, and John and Tina's daughter Shay arrives to join in the fun. I think she's my last chance of getting through to John. Hi, Shay. Hey, how are you? You've got one minute? 30 seconds, please. Excuse me. Thank you. Time's running out for your dad, for your mother, yeah. and for their house. I can't get through to your father. I asked him to go upstairs and just sit and ponder and, and think that this is your future. And if you think he's ready to change, by all means, bring him down. And if he's not, I don't care. Keep him out of there and keep him up there. Hey, Pops. Hey, Shay. What's going on? I'm just up here, uh, sitting down and waiting. Waiting. To go back downstairs. I think the point, um, was to try and visualize what could potentially be the future. Oh, uh, no, I've been doing a lot of thinking, too. OK. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of thinking. I thought my role was about the same all along. I feel like it's changed a lot. And I think a lot of it is a fear of trusting. You don't have to be here all the time. When was the last time you sat down at home and had a dinner with mom? You know? Yeah, I feel guilty when I'm not here. Do you know what's going on downstairs? No. It's awesome. There is a restaurant full of people that are thoroughly enjoying themselves. It's hopping. And it's working without you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting it, OK? I mean, I'm, um, it's going to be tough for me to back off of the working. I think it's important for you. I think it's important for you and mom. Yeah, you're making a good point, Shay. I think you would be able to spend more time with your granddaughter. Oh, I'd love that. It's possible. You don't want this to be your future. No. You don't want to live here. No, I don't. You have to commit to change. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I understand. If mom will uh, put up with me being home more. <laughs> love you. I love you too, Shay. Oh. I've, I, it's an epiphany. I've, I've just now realized my control is what dra is dragging the hotel down. Now I need to make a change um, in order for my personal life to improve and for my business to get better. Good job. You're doing Thank great. you. Thanks. <laughs> Tonight has been a real success. Seeing Brittany in charge and Rich cooking fresh food gives me real hope. But is John capable of letting go? My goodness, it feels weird. It's sounding so quiet now, right? Uh, well done. Behind the bar, well done in the kitchen. Scooter, well done. Ladies, great. I mean, you couldn't get a a seat at the bar within 20 minutes. That's how it should be. How much do we take? It's under $1,400 in two hours. $1,400. In two hours, we made more than the last four Wednesdays or four Thursdays combined. John, you spent the majority of the night upstairs. How was your night? It was in a very good night, actually. 
In what way? Um, my daughter Shay um, opened my eyes to some things. I'm here every night because I feel that I need to be here. That that is my role as the owner to wave the flag as a military term. But when I when it came from Shay, as she said, you know, Dad, <clears throat> I know how hard you work, and and I promised I wasn't going to tear up. And uh, this all happened without me. You trust your subordinates. As a commander, the most important person you have are your NCOs. And Chef and Brittany are my NCOs. I can't tell you how good it is to hear that, because you're a fucking tough nut to crack. Because <laughs> we have got one hell of a day tomorrow. But I need everybody, everybody at their best. Uh, good job. Thank well you. done. Thank you. Good night. Great job. Thank good you. night. Thank you. What a day. I'm hoping that John has finally got that message, but is it all lawyer crap? Tomorrow we'll definitely find out. Oh, God. It's freezing. My design team worked all night to bring the hotel into the 21st century. Now it's time to reveal the new Cambridge Hotel to the staff. Good morning. Good morning. John, how are you feeling? I can't wait to see what you've done in there. Right, you ready to go in? The only way we're getting in is with this, a key. Let's go, let's go. The door is locked, so your guests can sleep safe and sound. Come in. Unlocks, good, good. Right, come upstairs. I'm hoping you're gonna love my room. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Oh my God, look at the floor. Wow. Oh. Taking the carpet out and putting that flooring in absolutely transformed it. The wallpaper was expensive. In order to enhance it, we worked with it. So we've got the back drapes above yes. the bed. Yes. We have this amazing new floor. Yes. Oh. Perfect furniture that fits the room. We've upgraded every room with brand new linen and towels. $75,000 worth of linen. Oh my God. My God. We could have never afforded that. That is so wonderful. I feel like kind of like a kid that comes down Christmas morning and there's so many things under the tree that yeah. you're, you're in overload. I can't really comprehend everything yet. I mean, I'm just kind of looking at it saying, wow. Ready for one more room? Oh, oh my gosh. God, I don't know if I can take it. Wow. <gasps> wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. I can't wait to actually show a guest upstairs to a room. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, there's one more little thing I want to show you downstairs. Come with me, please. In the 1890s, the Cambridge Hotel gave birth to world famous Piler Mode. And I think that dish can put the hotel back on the map today. Something I thought was a huge missed opportunity. I've been working on a, an amazing, very special apple pie recipe that I'm gonna give to you that you own. And it becomes the best apple pie in America. And on the back of that, we've transformed this room through here to the Alamode room. Come through. Oh my God. Morning, everybody. How are we? We can sell our own pie. That's homemade, that Gordon is giving us his recipe for. Oh my God. This hotel invented pie a la mode. And the ice cream is made fresh here with a brand new ice cream maker and it's locally <laughs> sourced cream. I can't wait to try it. I know. <laughs> Come with me, please. Enjoy the apple pie. Nice to see you. Please, come through. Beautiful pile of mode. Dig in, dig in. Come on, guys. If anybody wants this, you better get on it. Oh, my God, that's awesome. The world-famous Cambridge Hotel apple pie a la mode. That is the best crust I have ever had on a pie. Welcome to the Cambridge Hotel. We now have the best apple pie a la mode in, I'd say, the world. People are going to be excited. Mm. Scoot, what do you think, bud? I'm shocked. You're shocked? Are you happy? I don't know what to say. Oh, mate, don't get upset, buddy. What's the matter? I'm so happy. Oh, good. I'm happy, too, as well. You know that. OK? <laughs> Thank Come on, you. buddy. Seeing how much he changed the hotel was very overwhelming. Uh, I can feel a change. I'm a lot more inspired. Right now, I feel like I could accomplish anything in the kitchen. I am proud now. There's a new pride in me to say, this is where I work. Time to go. 
I never thought I'd say this, but I'm actually quite sad to leave this place because no longer is John in denial. He can now stand back and watch his team run the Cambridge properly. As I'm getting ready to leave, guests are starting to arrive at the new hotel. Hello. Welcome, Hi. guys. How are you? And the biggest change of all is not the new decor, it's the fact the guests are loving it at the Cambridge. <laughs> this is beautiful. The restaurant is buzzing. The Cambridge burger with the pork belly. Guests are enjoying the new home-cooked menu that are put together with Chef Rich. Okay. Good. Yeah. yeah. And you better save room for the pie, because it's okay. totally different. Who's trying the apple pie? And the hotel's signature dish, pile mode is a big hit. And that ice cream is worth driving for. <laughs> Fantastic. Great buzz in there. I mean, it's electric, and it's the sound of the new Cambridge Hotel. My only hope now is that they keep it up and keep those customers excited, because when it's like that, it's phenomenal. Is that good? Can I have a bite? I think tonight went incredibly well. The, the fact that I could stay and, and sit with Shay and Addison and Bunk, it was really, really nice. Wow. To see you smiling is incredible. You know that. Yeah. You light this place up. But I don't want you living here. No, I'm not. I don't want to live here. I do not want you living here. I won't live here. OK. Tell him that. I'm not living here. I hear you. Give him a hug. He deserves one. Uh, huh? <laughs> he hasn't interfered tonight. And you sat down and spent time with your granddaughter. I had a blast. Yeah. My job is done, let me tell you. <laughs> no longer RIP. OK. Of the Cambridge. It has a bright future. Long live the Cambridge. Long right? Live. That's absolutely right. Good night, my darling. Before Gordon came, no. I didn't know where to go anymore with the hotel. And getting Gordon here and having him show us what the problem was, now I can see that the things can be fixed. I will tell you. OK. Colin Powell says optimism is a force multiplier. <laughs> I'm optimistic. <laughs> Stay optimistic, but don't get too involved, OK? OK. Uh, look after yourselves. I okay. will. Thank you very much, sir. Stay together. Thank you. Thank, thank, you, you. thank you, thank you, thank you. Before I leave this place, there's one more person I want to talk to. Thank you. big man. So you've got three more years left at college, right? About four. OK, hear me out, OK? I want you to keep in touch with me. OK. I'm going to give you my email address, because okay. I want to finance those next four years in college personally and help you, OK? Do it for you and keep that dream alive one day of owning your bakery. And then when your bakery's open, all I want back is a loaf of bread. OK? It's pretty unbelievable that he is going to be able to finance my four years of school. Well done. Good job. Thank you so much. Well done. Can't wait to finish school and pay him off for that big loaf of bread. You have an amazing pair of hands and a lovely smile. Don't stop, OK? Got it. And God help you if you fail that college. Thank you. You won't, though. I know you won't. Well done. Thank you so okay. much. When I go to school, I'm going to push myself 200 times harder. I'm going to show Gorin what I can do and how fast I can do it. Good night. Thank you. Well Thank done. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Take care. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Oh, good job, man. Uh, awesome job. Hey, you deserve it. <laughs> Definitely. What a week. What a place. And now, whenever I see Alamode, I know where it started. San Diego, California, is one of the top five vacation destinations in the US and is home to the Keating Hotel, which lies in the heart of the city's buzzing gas lamp quarter. Want to say the desk? This is Christos. How may I be of service? The hotel is the brainchild of local property developer Eddie Kane. Everything about the place is just the way he likes it. The Keating was my vision. I was at the Ferrari dealer looking at cars and it kind of just hit me. Why not have the Ferrari of hotels? But this 35-room boutique hotel is far from living up to guest expectations. Oh, my gosh. Eddie pitches this as the Ferrari of hotels, but... It feels like a hospital, sterile, almost. This is all style and no substance. I feel like it's a jail. Like, I don't want to take my shoes off, ever. This is uh, not exactly luxury. Eddie hired a sports car design company and sank millions into the interior design, but he spent peanuts on things the hotel really needs. Let's not use this machine for the sheets because it has rust in the back. Making life a misery for his guests and his staff. I have zero resources. Pretty much everything there is to do here, I do it. 
How glamorous is this? It's a hell operations here, to be honest. Eddie's constantly adding ideas he's seen elsewhere, but that's hurting the hotel and the restaurant. I believe our menu is a fucking joke. It's like four pages long, which are all favorites of Eddie's, but we're not feeding a fucking million different Eddie's. We're feeding different people. At the end of the day, I am the owner, right? If there's something I want on the menu, Jeff's gonna do it. Yeah, I think it does. <laughs> Eddie will come in and say, I want a chicken parm slider on the menu. I had one in New York, and I say yes. I have stopped being proud of my food. The hotel is millions of dollars in debt and struggling to fill the rooms. So I have my work cut out for me if I'm going to get this place back on track. We're losing a lot of money. It's a nightmare. But you should be able to handle that. Eddie knows he's losing money. I just don't think he knows how to fix it. I don't have any hope that things will get better. If anything works around here, it's because of pure dumb luck. There it is, the Keating. Wow, looks nice on the outside. Beautiful. Jesus, is that a dog outside? Hello, how are you? Good, how are you? Is that a model dog, was he real? No, she's real. What's her name? Smudge. Smudge. My God, she's ugly. <laughs> looks like a nightclub out there with those ropes. How are you? Yeah, uh, hello, how are you? Good to see you. There's a lot of red. Wow. I'm Christos. Christos, nice good to see you. Um, what do you do here? Lifestyle concierge down here at the front desk. You're going to be advising me for my life, or are you going to be... You need dinner reservations. So you organize everything? Anything you need. Oh. Now, somebody likes red. Is that smudged and likes red, or...? No, it's both the designer and the owner. Wow, wow, wow. Enjoy your stay. Right, that's what What floor are we on? We're on the second floor. Second floor, please. Perfect. Thank you. Right here, I like to always stop at the car. Each floor has a different model car. Who's obsessed? With the supercars, who is that? The owner. I'm ready. So right here, this is your room. Wow. Yes. It's so empty. More like a garage than a guest room. And how much is this a night? $759. $759. Wow. That's incredibly expensive. And what's that thing there? That is actually the jacuzzi tub. In the middle of the lounge? It is in the middle of the lounge. Wow. They designed the rooms, they took away all the interior walls. But without sounding stupid, these are car designers. Correct, they and are car designers. Now they're putting jacuzzis in the middle of suites. Last time I checked, a living room was for sitting in, not taking a bath. <laughs> Jeez, how much do these things cost? The jacuzzi tub itself yeah. is about $20,000. You don't take baths in cars! <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> this is crazy. But who wanted all these specially designed? That is the owner. Areas. That's Eddie. That's Eddie. Yes. <laughs> this is crazy! Oh, shit. The sports car inspired furniture looks cheap and isn't even functional. It's different than anything else. Um, yeah. Different from a nice hotel room. Oh, I don't know about that. Uh, who on earth would want to sit here and sort of watch the television? And watch the television. <laughs> it works though. The sheets. How can they also wrinkle when I haven't even slept in there? Why is that? We do them in house. We say we. What do you mean? You don't do laundry. Lifestyle means everything. Your mouthwash. <laughs> It's like gas. Sockets all broken and smashed down there. Someone's left their dirty ones there. The plastic plants. That's outrageous, $800. Oh my gosh. Gordon doesn't like anything about the hotel. Damn it. Anything else? If I have any lifestyle needs, I'll call. Thank you. Of course. So far, I'm not impressed with the Keating's pretentious and uncomfortable design. But maybe it can redeem itself with the one thing every luxury hotel should have. Impeccable room service. I'm starving. Come on, General the desk. This is Christos. How many of you? Hi, Christos. This is Gordon. What's a little bit bizarre for me is that I'm ordering room service at the front desk. Is it, there's no direct line down to the kitchen. There is no direct line down to the kitchen. The communication between departments isn't very, but really there. So we um, take care of everything and make sure it, it happens. Listen, I'm starving. Um, I had a tomato soup, please. And then pizza, um, a barbecue chicken. I'm fascinated to see the chicken parmesan sliders. I'll have one of those. I'll have that as soon as I can. Brilliant. Bye-bye. Thank you, bye. Hello. Hello, how are, how are you? you? Thank you. My pleasure. Wow. Well, is this how it's normally served? Yes. In a to-go box? Yes. You pay $800 a night to stay here, and you've got to eat your food out of boxes and plastic containers. Are we short of soup? 
because it's not even half full. That's how they serve it. That's how they serve it. That, that much? Yes. It's wow. one cup. It's like a retirement home. Is that luxury, do you think? No, not at all. What would you rather do? Sip that out of a cup? Of course. Jeez, we, we, we barely got half a cup. Um, anyway, I'm going to dig in. If there's anything else I can do for you, just go ahead and let us okay. know, OK? Brilliant. Mm. Darling? I'm sorry? Mm. You can say that now. It's finished. <laughs> Thank you. My pleasure. A chicken parmesan slider. That's dreadful. Bah, but me. Now I know why they got the boxes. It's a takeaway puke box. A pizza, unappetizing in a box. Especially when you're spending $800 a night. This place is obsessed with design, but serves room service in plastic containers. No wonder they can't fill the rooms. That is not my idea of luxury, let me tell you. That's embarrassing. Wow. How can this place call itself a luxury hotel? I need to get some answers from Eddie, the Keating's owner and visionary. Hey, how are you? Hey, how are you? Good hey, to see hey. you. This place has been your baby in many ways, and uh, I'm dying to find out the vision, the insight, and to why. Give us a little tour. I bought the building back mm -hmm. in 2000. It was around six million. Did you go to hotel school? No. Nope. You've never run a business before? Not a hotel business, no. Wow. So I was actually at the Ferrari dealer looking at cars and stuff, and it kind of hit me, why not the Ferrari of hotels? I'm more concerned what you were smoking at the time than what you were thinking. Why would you take one of the most high-spec cars anywhere in the world and turn it into a hotel? I don't know where he's coming from, but it does piss me off. I designed the Keating to be the perfect hotel for me, not for him. Where should I start? The floor. It's all scuffed and marked. When you have a resin floor, it needs to be updated. I mean, everything's just marked to hell. It feels cheap. Um, the sheets. You can't call yourself a luxury hotel if you don't have beautifully pressed sheets. OK. What's the idea behind sitting here? So when you have guests, you know, we can sit down and talk. And... Yeah, but where's the sofa? Where's the table? Where's the fun? Do you know what hurt the most? I got soup served in a plastic bowl. It was a chicken parmesan slider that tasted like it was cooked three days ago. Who in the fuck would put a chicken parmesan slider together? There's things that don't go in sliders, and chicken parm is one of them. That was my idea. But you're laughing as if it's funny, and you think because you own the place, you can put that in a roll and sell it. I don't know what he's talking about. This place is not bad. So I think Gordon's comments were complete bullshit. You're trying to convince me this is your idea of luxury. I don't know what to say. When was the last time you stayed in the hotel? It's been a while. You cannot stand there and tell me that there's nothing wrong with this place when you don't even stay in it. You bought a building that was your dream, but it doesn't feel like a dream experience to a guest. Nowhere fucking near it. I'm at the Keating Hotel in San Diego, and I've just met Eddie, the owner, who's completely oblivious to the fact that his supercar-inspired hotel is seriously underperforming. You're the owner, and you bought a building that was your dream. But it doesn't feel like a dream experience to a guest. Nowhere fucking near it. I desperately want to help you. Only if you start identifying the problems. OK. Could you uh, send that young lady up to clear that dog shit out of there, please? Jesus. <sighs> Trust me, Eddie is not used to honesty like that. Right now, he looks like a baby that's just had his lollipop stolen. How are you? Who is this guy? First thing he does, he lays right into me. The room service was terrible. Welcome to my world. He opened the bed up, and the sheets were all like wrinkled. And most hotels have those giant ironing things that the sheets go through there. We don't have that. I tell Eddie the problems that we have, but it may be sometimes you tell people something and it goes one side to another. I was in shock. Maybe Gordon will get him to wake up. I don't even know what to say. That was very embarrassing. After my meeting with Eddie, I'm ready to see how this so-called luxury hotel runs on a normal night. Hi there, how are you guys? Are you a uh, luxury lifestyle concierge? No, I am actually Sandra, I'm the GM of the hotel. And You're the general manager? Yes, oh, we haven't met. How long have you been here? I've been here for six years. OK, wow. So you're here from the beginning? Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I got a lot to tell you. You got a lot to tell me. <laughs> yeah. I bet she does, because the Keating seems to have more complaints than guests. Our room is not very clean. 
There's yeah. a hair in the sheets as well. We turned down our bed, mm -hmm. and there's what appears to be a bunch of sand. The sand? What do you think of the red? It's like a brothel. A bro oh. You've been in a brothel? I haven't, oh, right. but I've heard. Okay, wow. I can confirm it is like a brothel. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> Let me check on the internet. We've been waiting for 45 minutes. You know, if it's not up in 10 I'm minutes, just sure. cancel it, because we'll go to dinner, OK? OK. How can they make a guest wait so long for something that's not even cooked? The system for room service here is clearly not working. Taking the orders at the front desk, then pass them to the kitchen is madness. I've never seen anything like this before. Let's go through the kitchen together. OK. Weirdly, the hotel's restaurant, the Merc, is in a separate building around the corner. Can you believe that they're waiting 45 minutes for a cheese board? I can't believe it, Seriously? but I'm not surprised. She looked pretty pissed, huh? She did look pretty pissed. They sounded pissed the three times they called as well. Wow. What is look, it? Is it cheese board? Yes. Uh, where's the fucking cheese? Is that it? That is it. How much is that? 16.99, I believe. You're kidding me. I can guarantee someone's going to complain about that. Hello. How are you, Gordon? Yeah, bro, how are you? My name is Aaron, the right. manager. You're the manager? Yeah. Nice to see you. Nice to meet you, Gordon. Um, you're the manager of the restaurant? Yes, yeah, sir. That cheese portion there, barely two little slithers of cheese. They waited 45 minutes for it. And it's like no one gives a shit. Oh, I definitely do now that you've told me this is the first time that I've heard of it. Why would they wait 45 minutes for something that's already... Uh, I, I think the process, unfortunately, is a little bit slow here. I think getting up the stairs uh, is a little bit of a challenge. Why don't you take the call in the kitchen? Oh, in the kitchen itself, we can take that call. It's definitely an option, but we've always discussed... Would you think that's faster? I think as the hotel takes it, it's just as fast as... So even though the customers are unhappy with the wait that they've had to endure, you don't want to do anything for them? I didn't know how long the customer was waiting until just now. Wow. OK. Manager. Trust me. Aaron, the restaurant manager, isn't taking any responsibility. If he worked for me, he'd be long gone. How fucking weird. I mean... How do you rate him out of 10? Can we go into negatives? Aaron is the king of excuses as far as being able to kind of weasel his way out of things, but I'm not in charge of firing him. How are we doing over here, guys? No wonder the hotel is half empty. They can't even get the basics like room service and laundry right. Maybe Sandra, the GM, can tell me what the hell is going on Sandra. here. Right, we have a chance to uh, catch up. Yeah, yeah, um, thank you. So, all these issues with the laundry. Where's the laundry done? Let me show you. Please. Oh, here we are. So this is the laundry room. Wow. Bloody hell, you have got your work cut out. These are domestic. I know. These washing machines are designed for small families, not a 35-bedroom hotel. Wow. No wonder they struggle. Your lifestyle concierge come in here throughout their day to do laundry and attend the front desk and take room service orders. We, we are the... I mean, this is crazy. It is insane. Absolutely it, it is crazy. insane. I don't know how we do it sometimes. Who presses the sheets? We don't. We don't have equipment. So you don't press them? Mm. Can I show you where we are in the pillowcases? Yeah, so, Absolutely. Oh God, there's somewhere else. You seem to know all these problems, and you're the general manager. But if there's one person who could stop this, it's you. If the owner, well, yes, I can quit. I can leave to another hotel and go where everything is much better. It is hell to run this place. You're a general manager. Mm -hmm. Yet you're managing nothing. I spoke to the owner. I said this has to change. What's going on? Gordon is totally right with what he's saying, but is Eddie being so involved in everything? That's the problem. I have conversations with the owner about what works and what doesn't work in the restaurant. Stop. No matter how many times I say, you know what, we should not have a book as a menu. Eddie comes up with whatever he wants. But no one's taking responsibility. I pulled back my duvet, and the sheets were shocking. $800 a night to stay in something pretty mediocre. You should be ashamed. I am ashamed. I am ashamed. Oh, I've got to get out of here. Get down to the restaurant. Jesus. For a so-called luxury hotel, the Keating has been a major disappointment. <clears throat> it's like gas. The owner's misguided vision. You're trying to convince me this is your idea of luxury. It's taking its toll on the staff. It is hell to run this place. Hopefully the food in the hotel's restaurant is better than it was in my room. How are you doing? Table of one, please. Ooh. Good evening. Hey. Good evening. How are you? I'm very well. And yourself? Very well, thank you. And sorry. Welcome name is... to the Merc. My name is David. Davis. So, what do you do? I am actually the restaurant manager here. I thought I just met the restaurant manager, the little man. I'm the other restaurant manager. And the food, how would you rate the food out of ten? Six. Six. I wouldn't serve any of our dishes to my dog. 
Chef Brian's kind of given up. So much has been taken out of Brian's hands by Eddie that I don't think that he has the passion and the drive to be that great anymore. Starting off with chicken under a brick, what does that actually mean? It means it's drier than a bone. Amazing. Even the manager thinks the food's terrible here, and he's not embarrassed to tell me. And then the cavitato. Cavitapi? Yeah, here we go. With chicken, uh, sun dried tomatoes, mushrooms. Oh. You like that one? No. Oh, shit, really? Uh, I'm still going to try yeah. it. So for dessert, I'll go for the chocolate pig. Um, it's a 10-inch uh, dessert pizza. Chocolate, strawberries, bacon. How can I resist that? Thank you, Ernst indeed. Thank you. The table I'm ringing right now, just bring it as it comes, OK? Everything's under fire. Uh, right, what do we have here? This is the brick chicken. $21. $21. Brick chicken. Yeah, it looks like someone's just shat a brick. It's so dry. Yeah. I mean, really dry. That's actually better than usual. Really? Yeah. Chicken under a brick is where it should have stayed, because it should have never come out of the kitchen. Wow. Pardon my reaching. OK. This is the cavatappi and chicken. OK. Bland, chicken's dry, way too much rosemary, and just, it's Whoa. shit. At least I've saved room for dessert. What you have here is the chocolate pig. White and dark chocolate, strawberries, bacon. It's like we've had a crisis with the toilet paper department. And someone's wiped their ass with my dough. I mean, it's just. I've never seen anything so fucking unappetizing as a dessert in all my life. Absolutely. <laughs> Bacon and chocolate pizza. O M F G. Yeah, he didn't like any of it. Not one thing. Fuck me. Is the chef uh, off tonight? No, he's in the back. He's in the back. Is he That's... cooking or? No. So he's here, but he's not cooking. Hmm. I would uh, really like to meet the uh, executive chef. Chef, Brian Rutherford, Gordon Ramsay. How are you? Uh, let's go somewhere out the uh, line, shall we? I'm lost for words. I just, you know, I don't know. I don't even know where to start. But I'm, why wouldn't you cook for me? Why wouldn't you do that? It's not a question of me not cooking for you. It's do you want to see what we're doing here in Empu? Because I want this to improve. You've been here for how long? Five years. Five years. But you've been cooking for 30, 30 years? 33 years. 33 years. I didn't see you on the line. I didn't see you taste anything. I didn't even see you inspire anybody. This position is killing me in my soul. I've just been doing everything that Eddie wanted. We have too large a menu for the amount of business we do. See, if I have 120 items on the menu and we do 50 people a night, how much of this am I able to prep on a regular basis to have quality? But you're the executive chef on the menu. Yes, I am. How can you let that food go out with your name above it? Um, you can't just give up and almost, you know, abandon ship before it's sunk. I'm at the end of my life. You're toast. I'm tired. But you're, you're, you're an experienced guy. You OK? Look at me, look at me. You OK? Are you on medication? No. Excuse me, can you get me some uh, water, please? Quickly. Can you get me a chair, please? A chair. <laughs> Call 911, please, quickly. 911. Jesus, no. Come Jesus Christ. Urgently. What happened? It's just on the floor. Oh, shit. You OK? Call 911. Jesus Christ. Chef just fell, collapsed. Can I have some water, please, and a cold cloth? Urgently. Let's try and stay alert. Look at me, look at me. Brian! Can you get me a chair, please? A chair. Call 911, please, quickly. 911. Jesus. No. Come here. Jesus Christ. Call 911. Chef's on the floor. Jesus Christ. Sorry. Chef just fell, collapsed. Let's try and stay alert. Drink some water. 
No job is worth this, let me tell you. I was with the gentleman, we were just standing talking, and unfortunately he just collapsed and banged his head on the back here. I am really pissed off at Gordon. He's stressing everybody out. Everyone seems to be at their boiling point. Has he been stressed out for long? I mean, this has put a lot of stress on all of us. And... What, me being here? Yeah. But do not dare fucking go anywhere near that I put him in that ambulance. Got it. Let me tell you something. 150 items on a fucking menu the size of a fucking shoebox can send that man to an early grave, let me tell you. It's like he's a dead man walking. Yeah. And what he tried to tell me in a five-minute conversation is that you've overburdened him because he does whatever you want. You pay his salary, but you're not behind that line. You have no catering experience. You haven't spent a day in a kitchen. I've never seen anything so fragmented. Okay. It's like you're a little magpie, a little spoiled fucking magpie that's going around picking up little bits of glitter and running back and getting your army to expedite it for you. All that matters right now is that that guy wakes up tomorrow feeling better. Enough is enough for one day. Yeah? Hello. Thank you. Pleasure. Good night. Thanks. For me, the most important thing is that he's OK, but that guy has the world on his shoulders, and tonight proved that. What a day yesterday. The good news is that Brian's out of hospital. And they said it was dehydration and anxiety, so I'm gonna shoot over to his house, keep the cameras outside, and hopefully have a chat with him. How are you, sir? Good morning. I'm so glad to see you, you know that. Hi. I'm telling you. How are you feeling? I'm feeling well. <laughs> We've got immense troubles at the hotel. Mm -hmm. You cannot continue driving yourself into the ground like that. Eddie he takes advantage of my good nature. Do you feel well enough to come back to the restaurant today? Yeah. Good. Let's get you back in there. And trust me, this time, it's on your terms, not Eddie's. Definitely. Good to see you. The restaurant is the beating heart of any good hotel. So the Keating has no chance without Chef Brian. Thankfully, just a couple of hours after I saw him, Brian is back at the hotel. After going to the hospital, I believe that Gordon is totally in my corner, saying, get back in there. Get it. You, you got this guy. Now it's time to get the whole staff together to figure out how to get this hotel back on track. Thank you all for uh, meeting me. Am I happy to see you or what? How are you feeling, more importantly? I am feeling very good. Brilliant. Welcome back. Thank you. Very yeah. good. Let's get everything out on the table, because life's too short to fester. I'm here to help. And I just want to hear it from you guys. What's wrong with the Keating? The resources. It's the resources. I tell Eddie all the time, Eddie, I can't do my job. Your front reception desk should not be doing laundry, let me tell you that. The big concern I have is the room service. How on earth do we get ourselves in that mess? As a food and beverage manager, yeah, tell me why it's going via the reception. It's determined by, you know, Eddie. Oh my God, don't give me that. You're not the owner of the place. I tell you what I want, and you guys need to implement it. Why is the menu so big? Because Eddie comes up with ideas. I, Eddie sees things. Eddie has a lot of friends that come in that would like to see more items on the menu. Yeah. If I go see something I like from somewhere else, I tell you guys to implement it. But you're not a chef. He is. And he needs his identity, and he needs his voice. I do know Brian doesn't like to say no to me. You have a general manager, you have a head chef, executive chef, you have a front desk manager, you shouldn't get involved. And I give them ideas, you know, because I have a vision here and I give them the ideas. No. No. I cannot work with you if you're like this. We have the key players. The only, there's one little problem we have. And unfortunately, it's you at this point. After last night's dramatic turn of events, Look at me. the staff of the Keating have finally found the courage to confront Eddie, the owner. Now, there's one question I have to ask. Tell me, who's the most important person at the Keating? Who is it? Eddie Brian, yeah? The most important person at the Keating. Sandra, who is it? I, I gotta say, it's Eddie. Yeah, I mean, I, I believe it would be Eddie. 
Eddie. Sandra. No. No. The most important person at the Keating is the guest. And I think it's all been forgotten about. And it's more about keeping you, Eddie, happy. We have to focus on the guest. I'm here to put this place right. Understand that. Eddie and Sandra, uh, just come with me. If Eddie won't listen to me, and he won't listen to his staff, maybe he'll listen to the people who could pay the bills around here. Eddie, up until now, this hotel has always been about you, your dream, your vision. Now, it's about the guests. I want you to meet some very important people. I'm just really worried right now. I have no idea what Gordon has in the room. Hello. How are you? I see uh, guests that have been staying at the Keating over the last 24 to 48 hours. Oh, no. When I see all those guests there, I want to run away right now. I wanted to give you a unique opportunity to hear some very, and I mean very, valuable feedback. I've also stayed here, um, and I am frustrated, but I'm here to get this place back on the map. Give me a little insight, please. What do you think of this luxury hotel? Madam, what would you? I walked into the room and it smelled horrible. There was the rest of the jacuzzi, no water. Some of the features in the room were just lower quality, like the plastic looked a little bit cheap and old, so it doesn't feel comfortable. Ma'am, please. I just feel like this place was designed kind of form over function. It was just kind of weird. Where is one supposed to sit and eat breakfast in their room? My husband had to stand up this morning to have his breakfast while I took the only chair and sat at the desk. I'm sorry. Our, our room service was, um, we ordered a couple of the small pizzas and they essentially looked like microwave pizzas. And then the order was wrong, so we called the cracks. They eventually you know, brought up what we actually ordered. And then in the morning, they charged us for both. Wow, I'm sorry. Anybody else? There was some really high-end stuff, and then at the same time, there was just simple amenities that were skipped. Well, are you saying there's better at the same price out there? <laughs> yeah. Eddie, your baby, your vision. Um, on the back of that feedback? No, I appreciate the feedback. I have one question for you all. Who would return here? Let's do a show of hands. Who would come back to the Keating? Wow. Not one person. Gordon's comment about it's not what I want, it's what the guests want. Wow. I'm starting to realize that some of the things he's saying actually are true. I really apologize, and I am looking forward to having you guys in the future. I can tell you will have a different experience. Eddie yeah. and Sandra, you know, I'm not trying to embarrass you. But this is, for me, critical feedback, and it's only going to get better. The feedback from the customers was good. I'm realizing there's more issues than I thought we had, and just being here over the past couple days, I'm seeing what they are. I think we can definitely fix them and streamline them so the place works a lot more efficiently and all the guests are happy. Thank you. I appreciate it. Eddie is starting to see how much things have to change for this place to succeed. But for the hotel to have a fighting chance of turning a profit, I've got to find a way to reignite Chef Brian's love of cooking. Let's show the gang what we can do. Yeah. I don't have much passion here anymore. I'm hoping that, that, that Gordon being here will nurse it back. Um, right, first was the uh, roasted beet and burrata salad. They've just been seasoned with a little touch of salt, pepper, and then finished in a little hazelnut vinaigrette. Scallops. I like serving scallops with a nice sear. So, a touch of salt, pepper, a little bit of vinaigrette. I've just made it sort of citrusy. Good. So, yeah. I love it when you get excited like that. It's, you know, energy coming back. I absolutely love it. Well, let's have a little taste. Mm. Mm. Are you okay, Brian? You, you're killing me. <laughs> there's, there's two things on the plate. Ah. Got the, got the okay. scallops. And the onion purees. <laughs> when I'm on the line with Gordon, the energy level just pops up, and now I'm, you know, I'm standing a little taller, and it's exciting. Nice, happy, yeah, good. It's so nice to see you smiling. You know that. Gordon kind of unlocked the chains that I had allowed to be put on. I'm with you, every step of the way. But you need a voice in here, and your voice is on that play. Let it scream. I love Eddie, but. I have to be able to just say, this is not going to work. This is not to the benefit of the hotel, the guests, the restaurant, or anything. You can do it. And I know you can do it. I needed this to uh, 
remember what I used to do and that, that there's no limit to what I can do in the future. Brian and Eddie are both making great strides. And tonight, my design team will move in and try to get this hotel out of the pits. But first, there's something I've just got to try. I've got a 25 grand bath, so I might as well use it. Towel, please. It's been a challenging week at the Keating Hotel, a place that was all style and no substance. But its owner, Eddie, has finally turned a corner. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are we? Good. Very good. Excellent. It's time to show him and his staff how my design team have transformed the Keating into a place people will actually want to stay. OK, good. Let's be honest, the Keating is a hotel with huge potential, right? Yes. yes. But you need to focus your attention and energy to the guests that are staying here. Yeah? Come with me. Let me show you the Keating. Let's go. Come in. Welcome. Wow. Come here. Wow. That is great. Oh, my god. It's all opened up. Wow. There's no more dominant red. Read carefully all those wonderful configurations of your hands. Welcome to the Keating. It's just so beautiful. Isn't it? It's, it's just such an emotional experience. You all have a hand in helping the guests feel welcome. It's amazing. You disappointed the red is gone? No. No? No. It's a brand new, warm, inviting entrance to a hotel. Awesome. Ready to see more? Yeah. yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Come into my suite. Oh my god! <laughs> wow. So much nice. Oh wow. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god, <laughs> Wow. I am definitely <laughs> blown away. Wow. Wow. Oh Welcome to what I think is a sophisticated, comfortable, modern suite. Yeah? Let's start off with that jacuzzi. If guess would like to take a bath. Pull the curtains, they have a choice. That's how you embody luxury. The sofas, you can sit down, you can watch TV three meters away from the screen. <laughs> Brian, you've gone quiet on me again, jeez. We thought we were sleek and cool. Mm. And now it's beautiful, it feels welcoming. Come through the bedroom, please. I really like the concept of the made over suite. Now it screams the guests. You get stuck in a perspective sometimes, and you need to take a step back and have someone you know, come in and show you, and I think that's what Gordon has done. It's amazing. Now, something really important. I've organized a free trial period from a local linen company. Use it to your advantage. That means the front desk team doesn't need to waste time doing laundry. You've got more time to focus on the guests. <laughs> and Sandra, you are a GM. You're not a laundry assistant the lifestyle concierge. We don't have to worry about laundry. So I am happy. There's more. Let's go. Right, excited? Yes. Come through. We have refreshed the menu, OK? <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. Breakfast pizza. I've worked with Chef Brian to devise a short new menu that will play to his strengths. First impressions visually. It's very vibrant. The presentation's amazing. And the good news is, two thirds of the menu's gone. Chef, what do you think? I think that this allows me to speak to the guest. And Aaron, I want you, as the food and beverage manager, to take responsibility of room service. Own it. And no plastic containers. I, I think now we have the proper execution, the proper understanding of the menu with limited yeah. small items. We definitely can execute it a lot quicker, and now I feel a lot more comfortable. And that, for me, is great news, because it means the front desk is no longer looking after room service or doing laundry. They can Thank concentrate you. on looking after the guests. Yes. There's one more change we need to do. You've been wearing a red chef jacket for far too long. You deserve a white one, let me tell you. Put that on. Thank you. Enjoy it. I certainly and... will. I'm feeling great. I'm no longer Eddie's chef in the red jacket. I'm the chef of the Merc Bistro in white. It's not Eddie's favorite color, but it is a proper chef's jacket. You perform like one, 
You deserve it. Make it yours. Thank you, Gordon. Well done. This is the kind of energy you want to see every day. So you know what? As long as they're doing their jobs, I have no problem with them saying no to me anymore. Big night tonight, and it's going to be a packed restaurant. You've got to remember, you are all Team Keating. I know you can do it. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Guests are arriving for the relaunch of the Keating Hotel. And the first impressions are very positive. This is really nice. You like it? Oh, yeah. Oh, this is beautiful. Whoa. At long last, the front desk can focus on welcoming guests. How are you? Welcome. I'm Cindy. Pleasure to meet you. And the hotel's new white lobby is a great improvement. This is all red. And before it looked like a bus station, now it looks like a hotel. It looks mm -hmm. much more inviting. At the restaurant, Aaron is finally stepping up. All right. And taking a new hands-on approach to room service. Go on, go on, come on, quick. And not a plastic container in sight. Mr. Hanks, right? Yeah. Excellent. We got room service over right. here for you. The simplified menu has brought Brian back to life. I want the most gorgeous plates in the world coming up in this window. That's good news for the diners. So beautiful. It's very tender. It's like, I don't even need this knife. This is a joint where you don't need ketchup, because it's perfectly seasoned. And for the future of Eddie and the Keating Hotel. Keep it going. That's amazing. Oh my gosh, look how tender It's that perfect. Is. Very good. If I had one thing to say to Gordon right now, it's just, thanks. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's our last ticket out. I've been really lost here, and you've woken me up. Great job. New day, new day. And reminded me of who I am. <sighs> this place was all about Eddie's dream of what a hotel should be like. But he forgot the most important person, the guest. I'm just hoping that Eddie can trust his staff and let them work as a team, because this is a place I'd love to come back to. OK. Right, Sandra, you are a great general manager. Don't stop being one, OK? Gordon, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm proud to be the general manager of the Keaton Hotel. Give me a hug. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well done. Seriously, you can do the food and beverage. You can handle the room service easily. And my God, I mean, you bounce back from the dead. <laughs> Let me tell you. Literally. Literally. Yeah, literally. <laughs> Make it yours. Oh, it okay, well done. And do not change that jacket, okay? White suits you. You know that. <laughs> and let your team run your business, okay? I think this experience with Gordon was life-changing for everyone here. What you did to get the team back together, I mean, I'm telling you, no one could have done. But this place is on the road. And good luck. I can't wait to come back. It's one of those experiences you'll never forget. Good job, guys. Sometimes no. you have to trust. No. 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 Two years ago, chef and restaurateur Ken Peixota had a dream. He bought the River Rock Inn in Milford, Pennsylvania, a charming town nestled in the stunning Pocono Mountains, just two hours' drive from Manhattan. It was a golden opportunity. Light shone upon me as it come this way. But soon after he got the keys, the dream turned into a nightmare. I was expecting to reach a certain number on room sales and I didn't hit one-tenth of that. I don't think Kenny has an idea how to run an inn. And the few guests that do come are far from impressed. There's nothing in the bathroom, no shampoo, no conditioner, soap, nothing. We have to go out and buy some. If I came in, I would probably check right back out. It is, like, old. <laughs> it's trying to be cozy, but it's not. It's hideous. If I wanted to stay at my grams, I could pack a bag and go stay at my grams. I'm not going to a B&B &B for that. If you buy an inn, you got to step up and be an innkeeper. We need to fill these rooms. We really do. Facing financial disaster, Ken was forced to move out of his house and into the inn. I said, Ken, you're making the biggest mistake. And he moved in and he turned Ken the miserable man. Ken is now 48, single, living in his crumbling inn and hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. The more the hotel fails... $2,868 in taxes that are still due. ...the more controlling Ken becomes takes everything out on us to make our lives feel miserable just like his. You don't feel very good about yourself as an employee. Kind of chips away at your sense of self. I, I don't know what's going I, on. I, I, I told you I'd buy a little time so I can... Kenny's down here. Everybody's walking on eggshells. Everybody's afraid to do their job. 
They don't want to get yelled at. Clip! Come here. Fuck yourself. Everybody threatens to quit. It's a daily event. Yeah, if things don't get better here, I'm definitely leaving. You know what? You really need to grow up and act your age. You're a 48 year old man. Just get the fuck out of my face. The progression of events has just turned it all into a hot mess. And it doesn't matter what we do, it's just a hot, flippin' mess. We're rocking an American beast. Wow. All right, where's the reception? Anyone in? It's like a hallway, not a checking desk, unless she's behind there. Hello, hello. Somebody's ashes are down there. Bloody hell. Oof. Just like my granddad's house. Hello. Uh, where's the reception? Uh, this is it, basically. This is it. The reception should be out in a minute. If you like, I'll, okay. I'll shoot it for you. Thank you very much. Well, hello. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. I'm Karen Oshon. It's a pleasure to meet you. I was you. a little bit nervous then. You, know, you were was... nervous? Yeah, honestly, because I was just like standing here on my own. Oh, um, well, I'm sorry. I apologize for that. Um, it's confusing. Where's the reception desk? It's right here. Right. This is the reception desk. Can I just quickly show you something? Yes. And now I don't mind getting stuck in. Well. Wow. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. That is pretty bad. Yeah, that's not very pleasant. That's not at all pleasant. Uh, so. Would you like to go to your room? Uh, yeah. Follow me this way. OK. How old is this place? This hotel was built around 1880s. I take it it was decorated in 1880s as well. It kind of looks that way. For the first time yeah, and the last it's been, time. It's been a while for the rooms. There is a closet over here. Uh, they, uh, special hangers just Oops. for me. Ooh. Yep. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. I think the coat will stay. What is that? Extra, extra carpeting. We just got new carpeting here. <laughs> OK, so it's uh, safe for repairs. repairs. I've never had free carpet in my wardrobe before. <laughs> OK, just check my view. Ugh, look at all those bugs. And the blue bottle is stained for the week. Ugh. There's like a little forest of them down here. If we give these to your cleaner. Sorry. Ugh. It's like an insect funeral home. Truthfully, in the fall, there was like a ladybug problem. You'd bring an in and guest, and oh my gosh, it'd be like, you know, 50 bugs in the room. And so Ken and I would take care of that to get rid of the ladybugs for the people to stay. Um, now they've died. And look at this here. I think that's a cockroach. To welcome me on the toilet. No way. Having a number two. I'm just like, I can't believe it. Look at that. Never had a cockroach committee welcome me on the John. Let's get out of here. Well, what else is on this floor? Well, this is the owner's quarters. And all these bits of furniture here, do, do people literally sit? That seems to work well to, for in internet death. service out here. OK, yes, so this is yes. the Wi-Fi chair. Yes, it really is. I'm going to bear that in mind if I need to check my emails. It's wow. very sketchy at best. OK. Far worse than I thought. Through Gordon's eyes, I was like, whoa, it's totally neglected. Now I will, uh, I'll unpack and get ready for dinner. Welcome to Milford. I mean, it's a joke. How'd it go? It was horrible. The place is filthy. Filthy. My first impressions of the inn have been dreadful. At least I can take my mind off things with some TV. Nothing. Look at that. I knew those shitty hangers would come in useful for something. Fucking come on. I can't believe we missed the Simpsons. Come on. Damn. This is embarrassing. $110 for this shithole. Just the general hygiene, cleanliness is just shocking. The wardrobe's full of crap, and there's no excuse for dead insects and the filth everywhere. It's like they've given up, and no one knows there's a hotel here because it's just not fit to rent these rooms out for the public. I mean, look at it. If this is what the bedrooms are like, God knows what dinner's going to be like. So far, at Milford, Pennsylvania's River Rock Inn, I've discovered outdated decor, bugs galore. Look at that. I've never had a cockroach committee welcome me on the John. And a TV that last worked in 1982. I've heard that the owner is a chef, so maybe the restaurant will be the River Rock's saving grace. OK. Good to nice see you. To meet you. And it's Ken, isn't it? Yes, sir. Is the American bistro outside? Yes. Is it a classic bistro? Is yes. It... Everything made from scratch. That's nice. 
You're a chef by trade? Yes, I am. Are you not in the kitchen tonight? Uh, no, I'm not working online. So you've retired from cooking? Somewhat. Running the path, maybe, or? Uh, I'm running the other side. Right. I'm just watching all the food and letting and setting oh. everything out. It's hard to run this whole place by yourself. I have so many years of experience. I thought that when he hired me, he'd be able to let go a little bit, knowing that I could get this job done. But he just can't seem to let go. Um, and how would you rate the food, one to 10? Seven or eight. And if I asked you to rate your rooms out of 10, what would you give them? Four or five. I'm now shitting myself about dinner. Let's hope that the food is better than the rooms. Sure. The concept of an American bistro serving fresh local food in the country inn makes perfect sense. But I can't make any sense of this menu. Uh, well, uh, um, so I'm getting a little bit confused because we've gone Mexican on the quesadilla. We've jumped down to Thailand and then we've gone Italian for the calamari. What, what uh, American bistro? Yes, sir. Wow. Um, what would you recommend on the menu? We do a house smoked trout. I believe that it's a golden trout from uh, Northern California. It comes in frozen. You're recommending? that I eat frozen trout from you know, Northern California. You know, Chef, it, 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 it's, it's been only frozen once, right? Your head is sweating. It's a little hot in here, sir. You're dripping, yeah. It's me, I'm sorry, Chef. I know, I feel like I've got a leak in my fucking bar. I'm it's dying, your bald chef. head. Who puts these ideas together? That would be Kenny, Chef. OK, um, so give me a Thai sampler, please. Yes, sir. Yeah? Uh, entree, dying to see that. Pork the Valdestano. Chop. I'm travelling around the globe in Milford. Enjoy. I'm appalled. I was promised an American bistro. Instead, I get a sampling from around the world. I was expecting fresh food, but I get recommended frozen fish. What's going on here? The Thai oh. sampler, chef. Are they made in-house? No, they are not, sir. No, thank you, James. Wow. It's just frozen crap, reheated, and how can you make a slice of chicken look so bland? I wouldn't give that Thai experience to my fucking dog. L6 is on the fire, too. James, I'm struggling. Yes, sir. Where's the chef from? Is he a local boy? Yes, he is. I think left to his own devices, he'd do very well. He's very limited on what he can use for ingredient-wise because he doesn't do the shopping. Who does the shopping now? Kenny does the shopping. So he's almost like cut the balls of the chef on. Yes, sir. M6, M14. The menu at the River Rock is pretty much outdated. Uh, it's Kenny's menu. It's been here for years. I don't agree with the menu, but it's, he's my boss. He pays my, my salary, and still going to get to that point where you're just kind of burnt out. Hi, Gordon Amory. How are you? Tough on this one. What do you do here? I bartend and I help manage. Ken's the chef, and right. the chef that's cooking is not allowed to cook his own dishes. Yeah. It's almost like he's sort of cutting his balls off. Well, it's kind of what he does with all of us. Oh, really? He deflates you, strips your confidence, won't let you make any decisions, executive or otherwise. That's crazy. And it's... It's a lot of micromanagement. Why do you stay here? And I'm a loyal dog, unfortunately. I'd bend over backwards for him, but I, I'm, that bone's wearing thin. Rivaldo? That's your Chef Ramsay. That might be the golden ticket. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Jesus Christ almighty. It's like someone's just dropped a fucking T-Rex foot on my plate. Holy that's the Valdestano chef. Honestly. In fact, that might be a small Valdestano chef. Oh, that's a small one? Yes, sir. I mean, it's like a meal for eight. That Valdestano can feed an Ethiopian family of 40. You know what I mean? Horrific. This is not what I would expect in a country inn. It's worse than a nasty roadside diner. I feel like I'm eating a fucking flip-flop with mayonnaise. Ken, the owner, looks like a zombie, sleepwalking towards disaster. It's time to get everyone together and see if I can wake Ken up. How much money are you losing per month? Right now, about five to 7,000 a month. And that's on the decline? Correct. If those rooms aren't that busy, why are they so disgustingly dirty? They're, they're, they're dirty because I didn't check them. It's almost like we're robbing customers. When I arrived, you gave your food seven or eight out of 10. Yes. But the food was dreadful. Seth, how long have you been cooking? Almost 18 years. As a chef, 18 years in the business, are you proud of what you serve? Personally, I don't agree with Kenny's menu. It's on the menu. So. I want what I want. I know what I want. You can't hold people's hands in this business. If you don't fix this in, they've all lost their job. 
I honestly think that Kenny needs somebody to open his eyes so that he can see that everybody that works for him is capable and we're dependable and we're here to help him increase his business and make it successful and nobody's here to hurt him. I'm here to help. It's impossible because you are not helping yourself. And it's not as if you're the captain of the Titanic, you're the fucking iceberg. Yet you haven't stared at yourself long enough in the mirror and actually understood where the issues are. You're looking at them. Good night. Fuck me. Oh, Jesus. I've had about all I can take for one day. It's time to get to bed. But based on how neglected these rooms are, I need to know exactly what I'm sleeping on. My black light will reveal any bodily fluids previous guests have left behind. Start off on the bed. Oh, Jesus Christ. There has got to be semen. This is Hotel Hell. Before my first night sleeping at the River Rock Inn in Milford, Pennsylvania, I decided to check it out with my black light to make sure there was nothing I wasn't seeing. And I was appalled to discover a vast spread of bodily fluid stains. Has this thing ever been washed? People pay to sleep in this bed. Unfucking believable. There is no way I'm sleeping on these sheets tonight. Luckily, I came prepared. <laughs> Shit, I forgot to turn off the lights. Oh, man, that was rough. Hopefully, a shower will wash away the memory of those awful stains. Shit! Look at this thing. Oh, fuck me. It's like being in Danny DeVito's house. A shower. Come on. Oh, fuck. Man. Fuck. I feel dirtier now than I did before I got in here. Shit. It's freezing. I don't think the staff or the owner have any idea how revolting it is to be a guest here. Why don't you just go upstairs with me? I want to show you something. Place all of you. Time for a wake-up call. Good morning. Good morning. These are the guests that have been staying in the hotel. Now, you've all experienced over the last 24 hours a sleepover. And what I'm here to do is to help fix this place. I can't do it without your feedback. My biggest complaint was this morning when I took a shower, um, I had water up to my ankles before I got out. My shower head, I probably showered from here down because the shower head hit me about here. There was like bugs on the floor. And then I was sitting on the bed and then I saw a bug on the door, too. I have back problems, and this morning it was really hard to get out of bed, um, just because you could feel the springs. The big question for me is that, on the back of last night's experience, who would stay here again? A little raise of hands. I probably wouldn't come to stay again. Really? No one? Okay. Thank you very much, indeed. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I hope Ken is starting to see how his lack of effort at the inn is driving guests away. There's one more thing I want to show him. If this doesn't wake him up, nothing will. I'm going to show you something that is pretty horrific. Come in. Uh, just stand over there, please, three of you. Glasses on. Brace yourself, Karen. Awful. I don't even like to think of what I'm even looking at. It's like a fucking galaxy. This is foul. Absolutely foul. I'm shell-shocked a little bit. It's disgusting. It's truly disgusting. The seeing this makes me sick to my stomach. Oh, dear. I don't know what to say. I mean, I'm just... It's a horror show. It was horrifying. I was thinking how many times has this room even been rented without being cleaned for all that to be there. Ken, you're running a fucking hotel, not a brothel. It is fucking disgusting. Start taking responsibility. I've discovered some disgusting things at the River Rock Inn. Horrific food. I'll give that to my fucking dog. 
dead bugs. It's like an insect funeral home. And I've worked out what the source of all the problems is. It's Ken. And it's not as if you're the captain of the Titanic. You're the fucking iceberg. He's in way over his head and making everyone's life miserable as a result. And his incompetence has let the inn fall into a shocking state. It's like a fucking galaxy. It's awful. I don't even like to think of what I'm even looking at. This is truly disgusting. It's a true slap in the face. I apologize to everybody who slept there before that I put you through that. I think it's horrible. I hope Ken realizes now that there's more to running an inn than just owning an inn. This place needs to change and change fast. Yes. Elise just went to get some. First up, the inn needs to be cleaned, so it's a place fit for paying guests to stay in. I put the whole team to work to clean the inn from top to bottom. And I'm going to address the worst problem myself. Well, hello, madam. Hi, how are you? Very well, thank you. Is there any chance I can put this through a uh, wash? Yes, when do you need it by? By tonight. That's yes, possible. definitely. Would you mind? Uh... But could you do a, a sort of extra strong cleaning product? It's pretty rancid. OK. So uh, be careful. We'll be done. Thank, thank you. you. Bye-bye. Careful you don't catch anything. fresh. While the staff finish cleaning the inn, I want to have a snoop around the kitchen and see if there's any more clues as to how Ken is running this place. Notes everywhere. Who writes notes like this? Why do I have to ask weekly for the fish to be iced down? Do not take this sign down. Do not take my pens by your own. If you use this drill, replace it. Or I'll buy a new one with your paycheck. <laughs> Bloody hell. Charming. Ken definitely has issues. Bloody hell. If you eat these cookies, take one to your next job interview. I mean, my god. I'm surprised anyone still fucking works here. This guy is incredible. That's not management. This is insane. I can't believe Ken is so passive aggressive with his staff. I need to talk to him and find out what the hell is going on. I come across all these little notes about don't take this. If you do, take it to your next interview. You tell me, what's going on? I, I don't like being taken advantage of. I have some hard times with things that they do. But why aren't you talking to them? Why aren't you leading them? Why aren't you motivating them? Why aren't you getting close to them? The secret of any good management is about communication, understanding, and putting yourself on their level. Maybe I, I look at it as they should be on my level. Who are you kidding? Come with me, I want to show you something. Take a seat here. Ken thinks he's managing his staff, but I think he's bullying them. He needs to see how he's making them feel. I've set up a monitor in one of the bedrooms, and I'm going to force Ken to watch a staff meeting. I think this might bring about the change this place desperately needs. Stay here. I'll be back in five. <sighs> I came here to help. What I'm frustrated about is what I'm discovering. I snooped around the kitchen. I come across this, a cookie jar. If you eat these cookies, take one to your next job interview. We call those Kenny's nasty grams. I mean, is this a joke? No. Or is this... No, that's, that's real. I put those notes up because my staff needs reminders for me to tell them to do the simplest task they can come off as degrading, but I don't know if they get the hint the other, any other way. What in the hell is going on? Look at this one. Don't take my pens, buy your own. I think he hides behind, he's afraid of confrontation. It's passive aggressive, Seth. How does that make you feel? He causes us all to be discouraged in the job set we have. There's so many people here that really know their jobs well, but we have become discouraged, and when people become discouraged, they don't do the things that are necessary. There's no gratitude. Like, so when you say to us, why, why are we like this? We're just spiritless. He's really just sucked the soul out of every one of us. He's just a spirit sucker, honestly. I've 
lock Ken, the owner of Milford's River Rock Inn, into a bedroom where he can watch a staff meeting on TV. If you eat these cookies, take one to your next job interview. The staff have told me his management style has destroyed their morale. Is this a joke? Or no. Is this... That's, oh, that's him. True. Every day. There's no gratitude. Like, so when you say to us, why, why are we like this? We're just spiritless. He's really just sucked the soul out of every one of us individually over the period and length of time. He's just a spirit sucker, honestly. Anne Marie's comments about me brought tears to my eyes. Her especially because she's one of my closest friends. It did hurt me. What do you want to see change from him? Let the people, his team, do the work that he's hired us to do. This place can succeed, providing that you stay on track. You've got to stand up to him. Let me go and get him. I hope that seeing that finally got through to Ken. It's time to reveal to the staff that he was upstairs watching every word. Wow. Of what my staff thinks about me, it's awakening. It, it, it really saddens me because I would do anything for them and I feel that they don't see that. I need to change. I uh, watched everything you said. And I apologize. I never wanted to suck the life out of any of you. And uh, I think I control this place, but realize maybe I don't need to control. You have a good team here. And if we are going to move forward, you have to give them ownership of their own areas. Uh, Seth. Yep. You've got to get that mojo back. And I'm falling back in love with what you've employed to do. Uh, Karen, uh, you care, and that's what being a good innkeeper, that little <laughs> personal touch. Mm -hmm. You should have a, a hold on the inside of this business as sort of filling the place, like the inn hotel manager. So I want you to have that level of responsibility. I think what I learned the most was that I need to give people the opportunity to run this place. I can't micromanage like I always did. I really hope that he backs off and lets us all do our jobs. He just has to put the faith in us, and I know that our team can accomplish anything. I think Ken's warming to the idea of change, but I don't feel I've got to the heart of why he looks like a man under such extreme pressure. Kenny, have you got two minutes? Sure thing. Come on in. There's got to be more to this than money. Yesterday, in many ways, I started to believe you'd, you'd given up. Today, we turned the corner. We've got to stay on that track. I thought I, I thought I could control this place, and it didn't work. Mm -hmm. It's not working. It seems like the pressure you're under is not just financial, right? In order to buy this place, I borrowed from my brother. I said, I think I can really make this work, and, and the price is affordable. Would you help me? After we met with the owners, he went to the truck and says, how much do you want me to write the check out for? Wow. He's my idol. And my mother, too. My mother, it wouldn't happen without her help either. I said, I can move to this restaurant, to this place, and the only way I could do it is I need some money from you. I needed $50,000. And she also said, just take it. So both the houses are tied into here. So, if this place fails, you have let them down, and yourself. This entire place wouldn't be here without my brother and my mother's help. I want the business to succeed so they don't have to have a worry. I don't want to ever let them down. And you can't do it alone. Yeah, I know. Do you have a girlfriend in here, or...? No, no. Don't take this the wrong way, but it needs a... It needs a woman's touch. Yeah. It needs a bit of a feminine approach. It needs that kind of love, no? Yes. It's been kind of rough. There's been no lady in my life because I haven't been had a chance to go out there and, and even meet or date women. I just want to meet that special person. And just whew, big, deep breath. It's the first time I smiled in a while. Cheers. The River Rock Inn has come a long way from where we started. The once filthy inn is now clean, and Ken, the owner, has seen the error of his ways. I apologize. 
I never wanted to suck the life out of any of you. But before this place is ready to welcome guests, the staff need to understand the true meaning of hospitality. This place is definitely on the road to recovery, but I think this team needs some training. So I've asked a very special friend, Ramesh Sedwani from Caesars Palace, to come actually show them how it's done. Hi, Gordon. Good to see you. Well, how are you? Well, I'm Dean, thank you. How are you? I'm oh, great. Please take a seat. It's so nice to see you. <laughs> it's great to see you. So the customer focus is critical, isn't it? Very much. And in your mind, what are the golden rules? On in no, the first 60 seconds. You have to approach your guests with a big smile on your face because that just opens all kinds of doors. Find little ways to, to make a lasting impression on that guest and let them know that their comfort and their enjoyment is your primary objective. And it sounds simple, but it's not that simple, is now, it? If you practice all the basics, sure. the rest of it will just fall into place. It has to be natural. People know when you're not being sincere. The good news is the team here, you know, their heart is in the right place, but they are clearly lacking training. Okay. Uh, the owner doesn't smile that often, so... Oh, OK, all right. Let me go get the team. OK. Thanks, Ramesh. Kenny! We've <laughs> got someone uh, very special I want to introduce you to. Please, come through. I'd like to introduce you to a very, uh, very dear friend of mine. Please. My name is Ramesh. 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 Very nice, nice to meet Karen. you. He's very from nice Caesars people. Palace. Karen. He's Hello. flown in from Hello. Vegas. Hello. I asked Ramesh. Ramesh to come and teach you how to greet customers. Holy mackerel, he's the guy that runs Caesar's Palace coming to teach my staff. How lucky of a guy am I? He's here to help you and to show you within 60 seconds of those guests arriving through that door what we need to hit. First impressions go wrong, they never forget it, OK? Why don't we have a look at what they normally do? Stop straight away and we restart. OK. okay. Stop. As soon as you see a guest coming through there, you can come out here and reach for the door, open the door, and have a big smile on your face. It looked like you just lost your arm. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Bollocks. <laughs> OK, put a lot more into it. OK. It's got to be, good afternoon. It's great to have you here. Welcome. It was kind of hard. I'm going to work to get better at greeting people. Good afternoon. Nice to have you here. Welcome to the River Rock Inn. Thank you very much. Sir. Stop. Before he extends his hand out to you, you should have extended your hand out to him. I feel like I'm being yelled at by a drill sergeant. You're out on the stairs. Karen, your turn. Karen, you have an incredible smile. I was a little nervous. Gordon's in the back, and he's chanting, you know, you can do this, you can do this. You know, I'm giving a pep talk. Here we go. Good afternoon. I'm Karen. Welcome good to the River Rock. Good afternoon. My name is James Sanfilippo. I'm here to check in. Welcome, Mr. Sanfilippo. Come right this way. I see that you'll be staying with us for the next week. Yes, ma'am. Possibly more. Of course, that would be wonderful. Uh, we have you staying in our king-size room, which is on the second floor. Absolutely lovely room with a pretty view out the front of the house. So that's a nice place to be. Nice. Yeah! Finally! <laughs> Amazing. Karen is a superstar. She really is. That was very well done. Gordon helped me realize that I have people that I can rely on. And instead of being the hands-on owner, I should be more of the overseeing owner, which I really need to be. Very um, well done. Very right. Well done. Now that Ramesh has taught the staff how to make the right first impression, I'm going to try and help Ken boost his self-esteem which will make him a much better innkeeper. Ken, meet Barbie. Barbie, Hi. meet Ken. <laughs> Pleased to meet you. Nice to meet you. I've flown in Barbie Hatch, a Hollywood stylist, to give him a new look. This one's a little bit too big for you. A different shirt, maybe? Kind of While Barbie gets to work on transforming Ken, I want to check out the inn's website and see if that's also in need of a makeover. OK. This is supposed to be the Wi-Fi chair, and I can't even get any signal. Shit. Uh, one bar. There's amazing competition in this town, so in order to stand out and sort of be somewhat different, you do need a great website. My goodness, the opening page of the website looks as old and frumpy as the interior of the bedrooms. I mean, it's so dated. It's like it's been put together on a $20 budget. Shocking. He obviously doesn't realise that 80% of hotel bookings are done online today, so if you've got no decent website to follow, then you're absolutely screwed. Uh, Come back to me, Signal. Let's see. It's great. It really works. You don't have to put on a parka. It just throws around your neck, you're done. Let's do it. Thank <laughs> you so much. You're so welcome. Ken's makeover is finished, and I'm going to take him out on the town. But first, let's see what his staff think. Whoa! 
your new innkeeper. Very, very nice. Yeah? Yes, very handsome. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I'm taking Ken to a local bar. I think that meeting the right girl will give him a great confidence boost. The sort of positive energy that will light up the River Rock and make Ken a pleasure to deal with. Quite a lively little place. Take a seat. <laughs> How dapper does Kenny look? He's he very dapper. He does, doesn't he? Thank you. New, 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 new design. Man, right? yeah. <laughs> How could that man still be single? Who's like, single? Kenny's single. No. Oh, we got to find you a milk. <laughs> really? No. Oh, we do know, we know someone. Kenny, I'm his friend. I do. really do. Invite him for dinner tomorrow. Tomorrow? Uh, River Rock Inn, yes, tomorrow night. Okay. Oh, yes. Yeah. We like oh, it tomorrow. tomorrow? Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Relaunch it tomorrow night. It's going to be awesome. Yes. So, can we have a little toast yes. to Kenny finding a girlfriend? Yes. A girlfriend to Kenny. Yes. Come on, girlfriend. It was, it was really great ego boost. I felt like the king, boy. He really set me up. Oh, thank you very much. If I fail now, I'm really a loser. <laughs> Big day tomorrow. See you in the morning. Best wishes. Good night. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> Honestly, I've never seen a man change so much. Um, let's just hope he's not late for breakfast in the morning. <laughs> My design team worked through the night to transform Milford, Pennsylvania's River Rock Inn. And now it's time to reveal the changes to Ken and his team. Good morning. Good morning. How are we? Hi. Very good. 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 Seth, how are you feeling? Great, great. Excellent. All of you this week have really put so much effort into get this in back on track. So I'm greatly appreciative for your efforts. It's only fitting, okay, that we start the relaunch with a proper sign. Take a look at this. It's not the old sign from the old restaurant. It's a beautiful sign. River Rock Inn and restaurant. The best food and lodging in the Pokemon. How cool is that? That's very cool. <laughs> Does it look nice? Beautiful. It's wonderful. Thank you. Okay. Ready to go inside? <laughs> yeah? I'm excited. Let's go. Come through. Are you ready? It's a beautiful place to live and stay. Oh, wow. Not a place you've got to come and die. First off, we have a stunning colour on the walls. Gone is that hideous paper. So now it's in keeping with a rustic charm. And all the bugs are gone too. The changes are just incredible. I'm, I'm a bit overwhelmed by them. I'm blown away. Totally blown away. We replaced that dinosaur TV with a new flat screen. <laughs> Guess what? It works. <laughs> OK. Replacing the mattresses. Stunning linen. Oh, my goodness. New table lamps. And guess what? Gone are the spunk stains. Karen, the only Milky Way from the skies above. Yes? <laughs> Karen, what do you think? I, I think it's absolutely beautiful. It's still a country inn, but it's a country inn of the year 2012. <laughs> Let me show you the room next door, please. This is incredible. This is just amazing. Gordon just did wonders here. Oh, by the way. What? <laughs> I've updated your router, OK? Oh, so you can have nice. Wi-Fi. In, in the room? Inside the room. Oh, my god! <laughs> How cool is that? <laughs> amazing! Hello! I'm blown away. You're blown away? I'm blown away. Excellent. <laughs> oh, wow. Please, come in. Wow! <laughs> Look at this. Come in, come in, come in. Oh, <laughs> when I first arrived, the check-in was so confusing. Now, yep. the guests come in, they sit down, we offer them a coffee, a glass of water, and then we'll go to actually booking them in online. <laughs> wow! <laughs> nice! How cool is that? It is. Isn't it? <laughs> now, how much do you spend on linen a month? A fortune. A fortune. Underneath tablecloths, you had these stunning natural tables which were just being hidden at a ridiculous expense. Focus on the linen upstairs in the room. <laughs> Before Gordon was here, I just had a restaurant. Now I have an inn, I have a destination. I can't wait. I'm looking forward to the relaunch tonight. We're going to have a lot of fun. You like it? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you like it? Good man. <laughs> With a new decor and Ramesh's expert training. Hello. Welcome to the River Rock. I'm Karen. Along with a newly inspired Ken. Nice to see you. How you been? Enjoy your dinner. Thank you. The River Rock is in a much better place. Time to go. When I got here, Ken, honestly, that guy was a hopeless innkeeper. Almost like someone had given up. But, yeah, we've turned him around. 
It's almost like he's sort of, he's got his mojo back. And now, River Rock has every chance of succeeding. I tell you what, I've seen a lot of skies, but not quite a Milky Way like that. Fuck me. As I prepare to leave, guests are arriving for the relaunch. And I noticed some familiar faces from the bar last night. And as promised, they've brought a friend. How are you, my darling? Nice to meet you. Yes. She's going to meet Oh, you're the dad. <laughs> 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 have a little peep, have a little peep, have a little peep. First impressions. He looks cute. Looks cute. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> I can feel a good night coming on <laughs> now. <laughs> Joey, I need three onion soups, two fish cakes and fish fingers. With Ken trusting his staff and not micromanaging, he's able to spend more time on the floor. Salute, my friends. Leaving time to charm, the Mills of Milford. Hello, how's everyone tonight? Welcome. Good and this is... It. Hi, Kelly. Nice to meet you. Hi, Ken. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Follow me. Oh, God. Voices are... Come on, wake up. <laughs> <laughs> I was excited to see them. She was very pretty. I look forward to talking with her. Here we go, ladies. Thank you so much. Salute. My first impressions of Ken. He looks cute, uh, very um, gentlemanly. <laughs> See how the night goes. Salute, ladies. Thank you very much. The inn is buzzing. And Ken has invited some very special guests to see the place at its best. And this is my brother. Oh, how are you, sir? Likewise, good to see you too. And, and my mother. Hello, madam. How are you? Very well, thank you. Nice to meet you. There's no words to express how proud I am of Kenneth. Upstairs, the guests are loving the new rooms. And downstairs, they're loving the fresh local menu that Chef Seth and I put together. Really, really good. Really good. Before I can leave, there's one last thing I need to take care of. Can I have your cell number, please? Hey, not for me, for Ken. Come on. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Uh, listen, thank you so much for coming tonight. Oh, I really thank appreciate you it. For awesome. Awesome. No, thank, thank you. Whatsoever. Ken, come here. Okay. Now, how are you feeling? I feel wonderful. Honestly, at the beginning of the week, I thought you were going to sort of almost, I suppose, fall to the wayside. But you bounced back, and I'm grateful for that. Thank you. I'm grateful okay. for you. Oh, and one more thing. <laughs> Kim's cell number, it's for you. I can't have a better wingman than Gordon Ramsay, holy shit. He gave me her number, it's in my pocket. <laughs> no more sticky notes, nothing. Let them do it. Right. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, this is the greatest. Thank you so much. Gordon made me realize that I should be less of the hands-on owner who can't see the forest through the trees. From here on, I'm empowering my staff to make their own decisions, and I'm going to support them. No more micromanaging for me. What a week. What a galaxy. Fuck me. The historic Juniper Hill Inn sits on a hilltop above the quaint village of Windsor, Vermont. Built in 1902, the country mansion boasts 28 luxurious bedrooms and two grand dining rooms. It is filled with original works of art and antiques, all museum quality. Antiques dealer Robert Dean II and his boyfriend Ari Nicky bought the business six years ago. I've always thought that you should live with nice things if you can afford them. Oh, that piece looks good there, Robert. I thought you'd like it. The guests that we don't want here are people who don't have a lot of money. The inn may look the part, but despite Robert's dreams of an elite country estate, the hotel is barely functioning. Robert Dean has no hotel or no restaurant experience. The prices may be a little bit high for locals. $350. Two night minimum, so that's $700. $700? The lack of communication is very frustrating. Where are you? And I know the customers see that every day. I need my key too. I, at this point, I can't even get in my room. <laughs> With bookings at an all time low, the hotel is in serious financial trouble. But that doesn't stop Robert from living a millionaire's dream. Robert believes this place is his playground. <laughs> And a playground for his friends. He's got to have a lot of clothes made by him. <laughs> <laughs> he comps all their meals and rooms, but we never get tips. They're having a hard time paying me because they give away all of their money and food to their friends, showing off, using this as their private castle. With hardly any paying guests, it's no wonder that this inn is in the red. Yes, we are losing money, more or less like $200,000 a year. I think that the place is going to be closed, and it's, that's very sad. Gordon is going to come into this place and say this place is fucked. If I don't stop this business from bleeding money, it's doomed. I'd love to own an inn. 
in a setting like this. If you get it right, you'd make an absolute fortune. Before I get to Juniper Hill, I want to find out what the townsfolk think of the local inn. Hello. How are you? Very well, and yourself? Yeah, rather. I've been driving all morning. Um, how's Juniper Hill Inn? You're going to love it. It's beautiful. Um, reputation? It tends to be a little on the high end for our area. OK. But I would love to have a place to go to locally. Do they not invite locals up there? I feel um, that I'd be interrupting. I feel like I'd be intruding. Oh, really? What a shame. Thank you so much. Have a great Best day and, and welcome you. to Windsor. Thank you very much indeed. Take Enjoy care. Enjoy your visit. Thank you. Here we are, Juniper Hill Inn. Now, who in the hell would bring an RV all the way up here and not stay in that stunning hotel? Look at it. My God, that's beautiful. Wow. OK, around to the front door. Can't believe they haven't cleared the snow for a guest to come in. Are you kidding me? It's locked. That's not very welcoming. <laughs> Why would you have a big mansion that guests can't arrive through the front fucking door? Jesus, who wants to enter through the back door? Mr. Ramsey's here. I need you to do room one right away. Well, at least this door's open. Finally! Hello there. How are you? How are you, Mr. Ramsey? Black like Gordon, please. Oh, oh, Bloody Gordon. hell, what a nightmare. I'm Robert that? Dean. Robert Dean. We, uh, were you over there? I, I was at the front door, yes. OK, this is actually our entrance. And in the winter, because of snow, really? we have to keep that locked. Because otherwise, the snow load comes off and kills people. Kills people? Yeah, it can. Have you killed anyone so no. far? No. <laughs> Where's all this stuff from? Um... An aftermath of an antiques fair. Yeah. This looks like it could be a beautiful room, but you can't tell because it's stuffed with so much clutter. That's the reception desk? No. My God, so what is that? That is our bar right now. You are kidding me. This is the bar? Yes. With what, that? Martinis. Martinis. Oh, yeah. God bless him. <laughs> Uh, made of pigs. Pig martini. Well, we have three rescue pot-bellied pigs. You have three pigs here? Right. What is that for? Were you born with this in your mouth? Yeah, don't I wish. Honestly? Uh, actually, no, that was a gift from... A giant. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> Robert obviously loves to show off all his expensive antiques, but as a guest, I don't feel comfortable. I feel like I'm in a museum. This is the main formal dining room. This big chair here is for, for one? Uh, just kind of, we're known as a romantic destination and... Uh, <laughs> just out of interest, how Well, do we... we would move the table. Uh, move it in for me, please? Yes. Wow, so you've got a sofa on the table. We thought it was kind of nice to have, like, a cosy banquette. Oh, well, three US presidents have dined here. Oh, really? Which ones? Uh, Teddy Roosevelt, Calvin Coolidge. Teddy Roosevelt dined in here? Wow. I wanted to try to give him a little bit of sense of the history of Juniper Hill. Wow, OK, so that's the dining room. Well, we have two dining rooms. Oh, God. You must be busy with two dining rooms. Well, I wish we were busy. Bloody hell. We have spurts of being incredibly busy. Right. Uh, where we lack is all the other times. Really? Yeah. This place looks like a millionaire's mansion, not a struggling business. I've got to scratch beneath the surface. This place per week uh, is telling how much? We're lucky if we're doing, you know, 15,000 a month. What does it cost to keep the place open? 30. Really? Yep. So you're losing $200,000 a year? It's been a nightmare. We maintained our room rates, thinking that the economy wouldn't be this long a haul. But we've all experienced those kind of difficulties, and myself included, but you, you navigate your way out of that recession. Unfortunately, my partner lost his job. We expected him to have his job for a little longer. He must have gained a substantial payoff or retirement. It's all been put into this. How much? Over a million dollars. A million dollars? Into this already? Yes. And does he have an active role in the business? He tries to maintain the accounting, mm -hmm. and he helps just about with everything. Uh, we're in trouble. Trouble? You'd never guess from the look of this place. It's more like Buckingham Palace than Skid Row. Do you know what, um, Robert, honestly, I'd like to go straight to my room, if you would not okay. mind, please. All right. Wow. Uh, this place goes on. It does. It's the largest colonial revival mansion in New England. And more paintings. Wow. And you're in the Maxwell Everett Suite, which is the original. Um... Okay. Wow, beautiful room. 
And, uh... Uh... I mean, this is, uh... This is a beautiful room, but... What is that smell? I mean, seriously. It... It does smell. Yeah, but it smells like shit. I mean, that is horrific. Oh, my God. It smells like sewage. I'm at Vermont's Juniper Hill Inn, and I've just met its owner, Robert Dean II, who's filled his hotel with expensive art and antiques. Were you born with this in your mouth? But he can't fill his rooms, and his business is struggling. You're losing $200,000 a year. It's been a nightmare. And no wonder, because although the room he's put me in looks nice... Beautiful room. ..it has one major drawback. What is that smell? It smells like raw sewage. We had a plumbing issue, and... It's like someone's it's... shut under the bed and... Um... How much? This room goes for $350 a night. $350 a night for a room that smells of shit? Well... You're kidding me. We haven't rented it, though. Bloody hell. It's been out of use for, um, four months. Before. Four months? Yeah. Oh, come on. It has been. This is crazy. It is crazy. It doesn't make sense. I've got to get out of here. It stinks of shit. Is there another room, Yes, please? I have room, too. Bloody yeah. hell. I didn't realise... $350 to be caked in shit? Wow, it's gorgeous, and this one doesn't smell like crap. I'm going to quickly um, unpack, and then I would um, I would like to have a um, a quick bite of lunch. Okay, I'll yeah? tell, I'll notify the chef. What time does the restaurant close for lunch? I know. Well, it's we actually don't serve lunch normally, but we're happy to prepare you something. <laughs> Is that a joke? We, we serve breakfast no, no, and dinner. Stop! 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 You don't actually serve lunch. No. The restaurant's closed for lunch. Yes. If someone requests lunch, we'll make lunch for them. But could you uh, prepare lunch for me? Uh, yes, I can. I'll tell the chef. Please. OK. Uh, thank you. Yes. Not open for lunch. Gordon is going to want lunch. Huh? Gordon wants lunch. What am I supposed to do with that information? Hmm. That was a welcome breath of fresh air on the back of that disgusting smell of crap in that room. I can't believe it. And the rooms are gorgeous, and yet how could you have a room that has been smelling for months that bad, and then he sticks me in it? What a muppet. Despite the hideous smell in that first guest room, I've still worked up quite an appetite. Hello. Hi, how are you? Barbara. Barbara, how glamorous are you? How nice are you to see you. Likewise. I have a mad crush on Gordon. As he knows, I'm a cougar. <laughs> how old are you now? I, oh, don't You're not old. Last week, I turned 70. You're kidding me. You look you a million dollars. You have made my year. 70. Watch out, Joan Collins, I'm telling you now. <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> Barbara, what's wrong with this place? Well... In a nutshell. Don't get any people, mm -hmm. like pulling teeth to get my paycheck. You don't get paid? It takes forever to get my paycheck, and when I do, it's usually something's left out. But hold on a minute, you, you don't get paid, and when you do... Not, at, not on time, we're supposed to get paid every two weeks. So what do you earn a fortnight? I made 6000 this year. $6,000 a year? That's ridiculous. You know, you got to have the money flowing, and it's almost come to a standstill at this point. My last paycheck was $48. Unbelievable. Robert's obviously got enough money to fill the guest rooms with fine art and antique furniture, but he doesn't pay his staff. And I'm starving. What would you recommend? The crab cakes with a little salad. So this is the dinner menu. OK, because we're not open for lunch. Right. And the lamb sounds great as well. You want the lamb? Yeah. All right. Darling, is this a uh, prefix menu or...? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. there's no prices on here. What sort of restaurant doesn't have prices on the menu? It's like a club for millionaires where, if you have to ask, you can't afford it. I've got a supplement of $15 from the lamb. It's How much is...? Enough charge for the lamb. Is Robert nearby? How much is it for three courses? $59. $59. So if we had the lamb... It would be... 74 People are horrified at the price of the food. This is why a lot of people think that Juniper Hill is snobbish. When we typically take a reservation, we will tell people it's a three-course meal. But that's for the residents. I'm talking about a local coming in here. We're reservation only, though, so nobody walks in. We don't what? have walk-in. How can you expect to appeal to the locals? Um, we haven't identified the appropriate people to come here, or... Hold on a minute. What do you mean, appropriate people? Hold on. People who can afford $59 for three courses. Appropriate people? What a snob. Where does he think he is? The Ritz? And where's your table? Which one's your table? Uh, well, most of the time I eat in our RV, our motor coach. Say that again? Oh, we have a motor coach to the side. 
Christ, and where did it come from? Is it yours? You rent it? Uh, yeah, it's ours. I mean, we owe on it, but we bought it and we bought, bought it. it. Yeah. And how much was that? Over $100,000. $100,000? You're three years away from 50. You should not be living in an RV. We don't live in uh, an RV. Um, it is a motor coach, which is the higher end version of an RV. It is that psychological break for us, and it gives me a place to relax and kind of unwind. I actually love it. I could live there the rest of my life, to be honest with you. It's quiet, it's clean. I suppose if this place doesn't get fixed, then you might be in there full time, yeah. Just sat down for lunch at the Juniper Hill. Hello. And already I've found out the staff aren't paid on time. Like pulling teeth to get my paycheck. And the owners live in a camper outside. How much was that? Uh, over $100,000. This place is baffling. I hope the food makes more sense. Excellent. <laughs> wow. Where are the crab cakes? Oh, that's them there, underneath there. Are they mini crab cakes? Are we, uh... The chef has decided that those are the size that he needs to serve. Mm-hmm. I mean, that tastes dreadful. That thing tastes sort of washy and soapy. And $20 for that. He's as cheap with his crab cakes as he is with his staff. Wow. Now for the lamb, with Robert's ridiculous $15 extra charge. It's um, a rack oh, of lamb mackerel. encrusted in macadamia nuts, uh, fresh herbs, and a little bit of Dijon mustard. It's served with a honey vinegar reduction. It's not even cooked properly. I'll rest it and I'll take that off. I always get nervous when you see white fat like that on the side of the chop. Is it to your liking? I mean, it's pretty raw in the center. You like the flavor of it, though, the honey curry? No, way too no. sweet. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not satisfied with uh, the quality of the food that's coming out of the kitchen. I believe our chef has a learning curve to be well, where he needs to be. Thank you. We just lost our other chef. Right. Why did the chef leave? I'm supposed to tell you the truth, right? The truth is all I want to know. Why did the chef leave? Well, her paycheck. Mm. She put all her, everything on her uh, charge cards, and, and she just figured she wasn't paid back for what she... The chef bought produce on her she credit did, card? She did everything. She was the best chef ever. Barbara, that's dreadful. I'm starving. Um, the peanut butter chocolate decadence. Uh, I could do with some of that. Pick me up, please. Thank you. God. A chef that left because she had to buy produce on her own credit card. I mean, this guy's priorities are upside down. A bit like this inn. OK, are you ready? This, he said, he doesn't care for the sweetness. There's fat around it. He didn't care for the flavor of the honey gar. Wow, thank you very much. Um, did you cut it in half? Because it looks like someone's taken it. And where's the other half gone? Uh, it goes to the another person who orders. Oh, no, I want my other half. $74. This place is insane. Listen, half my dessert's missing. If you think I'm spending $74 for a dessert that is half cocked. Mm. It's actually quite nice. There is hope. I'm sorry. You know, I'm, I'm going to say that that is not a dessert that he made. Barbara made it. No. Nope. Somebody else makes desserts. It's ordered. Like store bought. Like through one of our purveyors. What? Where's the chef? He's in the kitchen. Can you get him out, please? Yes. What? How you doing, chef? Julian, in my opinion, is not living up to his potential as a chef. He will try to cut corners, and I think Gordon needs to know these things. I've just spent $74 for three plates of absolute dire, dated shit food. Crab cakes. Yes, sir. You can't put two little half testicle sized fucking crab cakes that came from a can. There's bigger fucking cakes, chef, at the fucking canopy party. My lamb was cold in the middle. The fat was white. It was almost like a mouthful of sugar. The best tasting dish for me was the fucking chocolate peanut thing that I got served half a portion that's not even made fucking in-house. What is this? There's no synergy here. There is honestly a lack of communication often. Sometimes when I'm in the middle of doing breakfast service for the 10 people that we randomly get, I get five texts from him asking me a question. So why are you texting him? 
If you have a question, I'd you like should maybe show leave the RV and come out show, and talk to show us. Show me those texts. Are you nitpicking? Are you trying to control him? Are you... No, I'm trying to make sure I, I'm, I haven't been sleeping very well, to be honest with you, and uh, I've, had, I've been beaten down. I'll take responsibility for everything that happens in the kitchen. You don't own the place. You own it, yet he's acting more responsible. What do you earn a week, if you don't mind me asking? A thousand dollars? Before taxes, four hundred. Jesus Christ almighty. Four hundred dollars a week to be the head chef in a luxury hotel? That's insane. I mean, you're barely surviving. I'm, I'm, I don't know that I'm even barely surviving. If you're not happy with your work environment, you should leave. Are you taking the piss, or is this just an abuse for you? What are you doing to these people? This is their livelihoods. This is your responsibility. Rob's world. And you're in an RV, a hundred grand. Everybody is disgusted that you live in that thing. They really are. Because it costs so much money and they can't get their paycheck on time. Well, that is not the that is that not is the part case. of the issue. But we are surrounded by wealth and reminded of poverty at the same time because of that RV. Well, it's a symbol. To me, that RV is a symbol. And it's a symbol that you're separating yourself from everybody else. I'd be very careful about coming down on me too hard. I'm telling you exactly how I feel and how let me, the let people me tell that you I work I with feel. feel. Let me tell you how I feel. Tell when me. you're in your fucking kitchen all day long and you're on the goddamn internet instead of actually trying to perfect a menu and get a menu, how long did I ask for you to make a menu of your own? And if I'm on the computer, usually as I'm trying to research menus, oh, research please. ingredients. Give me a break. I've given you plenty of breaks. I work very long days, yeah. and I haven't been paid in three weeks. There's only been one paycheck that I got on time. Almost the entire staff is ready to walk out because they are tired of not getting paid. Anything to say? No, we, we do things. Oh, please. It's my first day at Vermont's Juniper Hill Inn and the battle between the chef and the owner. I'd be very careful about coming down on me too hard. Has turned what should be a charming country inn into a war zone. I'm telling you exactly how I feel. I work very long days, yeah. and I haven't been paid in three weeks. There's only been one paycheck that I got on time. Almost the entire staff is ready to walk out because they are tired of not getting paid. Anything to say? No. We're tired, and half the team is broke. I'm beyond angry. I'm beyond pissed off. Well, I just got a new asshole ripped to me. Gordon says that I live in a fantasy world and that uh, I live in a million dollar RV while our, our, our employees can't pay their bills and all of this kind of stuff because we don't pay them on time. And they're all complaining that they haven't gotten their paychecks this time either. Oh, they haven't. And he said that everything is all about me. I can't believe what a mess this place is. I've got to get off this hill for a bit. There's someone I need to see. Hello, is that Lida? It's Gordon Ramsay. I've got some questions about Robert and Juniper Hill. Would you mind if I pop over for five minutes, please? Great, I'll see you then. Thanks, Lida. I think the old chef that quit will be able to give me some insight into what's wrong with Juniper Hill. Good to see you. Good to see you. Come on in. Give me a little insight to what it was like actually working there. I have to say it was a very interesting five years. Uh, things were going very, very well. And then all of a sudden, two years into it, they stopped answering the phone. Hmm. Robert, I think, thought he was too important to answer the phone or he was too busy doing other things. So preoccupied and distracted. Very, in very preoccupied and distracted and not focused at all on maintaining his own business. Wow. I was getting cut out of a living when they did all this stuff. I used to earn forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 in one restaurant, and now I'm down to earning uh, fifteen. dollars Were you paid on time? Um, not very often. Um, did you ever use your own money to buy things? All the time. And then I would have to demand to be paid back or we weren't going to open for dinner. It's insane. Barbara has been shorted checks a lot. She's barely earning $100 a week. Yeah, you? and he won't pay her. And then if he had a private party with all his friends, he didn't tip them. You're kidding me. No. That's just disgusting. I mean, I, that's where I, I draw that. You can't do that. No. You just can't treat people like that. Now, he's a confirmed snob, and he thinks he's above yeah. the town. He thinks he's untouchable. 
I'm here to make this place work. Um, yeah. The first thing I'm going to do is burst his bubble. I'd like to be a fly on that wall, but... Would, would, <laughs> would you come back and walk through the doors to have a look at it at the end of the week and just come back for dinner? No. No, just one go or...? No, I'm not even interested in getting in. I, I just fear getting in one more battle with Ari or Robert. And, what a shame. Um, After five years. Yeah. Do you think I've got a chance of saving it? The problem he has now is nobody will work there. You know, I'm there to get this place turned around. Uh -huh. um, those staff deserve a better future. They do. You know, I, I feel terrible for them. Um, listen, thank you. You're very welcome. Um, appreciate your time. Enjoyed it. Thanks, Lida. Likewise. Nice to meet you. Good to see you too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. How sad is that after five years of her life dedicated to the Juniper Hill? You know, she won't even step foot in the door. She doesn't even see them. The old chef left because she couldn't stand it. And the current chef looks like he's ready to walk too. I wonder if everyone here is feeling the same frustration. Jennifer, what you, what's wrong with the place? What's wrong with the place? We're lacking uh, paychecks on time. Paycheck? You don't get paid on time either? No. We're missing basic supplies too. Basic supplies? We don't even have, I mean, Noel purchased guest checks for us today so that uh, we've been using scrap pieces of paper. First name is? I'm Ryan Keith. Ryan Keith. That's and what'd you do? I'm the estate manager here. I do all the maintenance on the house. I've done everything here, though. That's why he likes me to spread out my talents to mm -hmm. try and help anybody wherever they need help. How's morale? Not good. <laughs> I personally haven't been paid since the 6th of January. Here it is the 1st of February. That's nearly a month. And you pay the employees before paying your bills when they've done the work. That's their livelihood. I'm amazed you're still here, working as hard as you are. Because staff never need to be treated like this, let me tell you. It's always as if what you're saying to him doesn't get through because he sees you as not an equal. He treats me like that, and that really bothers me because I feel like I've contributed a lot. It's actually pretty degrading. This is insane. I'm shocked with what I'm finding at the Juniper Hill Inn. Owner Robert wants to kill his chef. How long did I ask for you to make a menu of your own? And the rest of the staff want to kill Robert. How's morale? Not good. Estate manager Ryan has told me about some of the problems, but I now he wants to show me. If you want to see the root of the problem, let's go to the basement. <laughs> to the basement? Yes, please. Jesus, what's in there? Everything. Oh, really? It's the majority of it is personal items. Not even the shelves are all lined. Bloody hell. Look at this place. Oh, my God! Look at this stuff. Stereos, wine racks, quilts, chairs, tables, copper pans. More chairs over there. Look at these. Robert prides himself in having to have the very best of everything. Christ, there's enough in here to open three restaurants. Is all this stuff still brand new? Most of it is brand new. Littered with thousands of dollars. Robert's got so much stuff, he could furnish a dozen houses. But he doesn't pay his staff. It's crazy. Where are we going? Raise yourself. We're going up to the office. You're kidding me. Oh, no. Please, come, come on. In. This is the office. This is the office. You're kidding me. Not at all. I wanted you to see. Jesus Christ. Scares me half to death. Oh my gosh. This is insane. It would only take a day or two to sort out this hoarder's heaven. But Robert's left it in chaos. No wonder he spends all day hiding in his RV. This guy has lost the plot. This is disturbing. Please tell me there's no more. Yes, there's more. This is where the pigs are kept. <laughs> at least they look happy. Hey. Pigs who live a life of luxury while everyone around them suffers. Sounds strangely familiar. Bloody hell. So the owners live out, the pigs live in. There's more. So check out the storage units. Storage units? You are kidding me. No. Oh, my god. This one's all personal items. Look at oh, this. Jesus. I mean, I swear to god, it's like a special edition of Hoarders. I mean, honestly. Wow. I'm in shock, you know that. And this one? All of this entire storage unit is full of chairs. Oh my god. Look at this stuff, honestly. I mean, they must be packed with thousands of dollars worth of... Hundreds of thousands of dollars. How much stuff does one need? Bloody hell. I can't believe how much stuff Robert has bought. He must have spent a fortune. I've got to meet Robert's partner, Ari, and find out why he's financing all this. Welcome, welcome. My name's Ari. It's a pleasure. Yeah. 
please. Um, my God. So, how much money have you put into this business personally? More or less uh, over a million dollars. A million dollars. And how much have you seen back? Nothing. Hmm. It was all my, my uh, severance packages, my income that I when I was working, and then my retirement plans. Robert's savings are in artwork uh, and antiques. I have supporting this in with my, my savings. Clearly, this is a beautiful place, but putting your entire life savings into a sinking ship is insane. And with Robert at the helm treating his staff so poorly, I don't see things getting any better. Robert is in a fantasy world, and I've been struggling all day to get through to him. This place, it's dreamland, a playground for your boyfriend, Robert. Your biggest problem mm -hmm. is not Juniper Hill. Your biggest problem is fucking Robert. I'm at Vermont's Juniper Hill Inn and I've just had a difficult conversation with Robert's partner, Ari, who seems strangely unconcerned about how bad things really are here. How much money have you put into this business personally? More or less uh, over a million dollars. A million dollars? And how much have you seen back? Nothing. Hmm. But I've tried to make him see who's to blame for the problems. Your biggest problem is fucking Robert. Dinner time is approaching. Word has spread about me being at the inn and the place is bustling. Good to see you. Hello Hi, there. Hey. <laughs> nice to see you. I'm learning a lot about why the inn is struggling by watching Robert and Ari deal with a new influx of guests. Anyone with any restaurant experience would stagger the seating of guests. But as if they're just welcoming people to a dinner party at a oh, private wow. house. Hello there. How are you? Robert and Ari seat everyone at once. There in the corner. Make pretend you're back in 1902. It's a, meant to be a relaxed evening. And... Order in. And that's a recipe for disaster for Chef Julian and the wait staff. Chef, I'm making a change on 21. Write it down. Don't tell me. Just write it down. Give us an order. Are you guys kidding me with all these orders? Who said everybody at once like this? Your best we don't know about pacing. How's the bread? Who's writing the tickets? Do you mean, I mean, table four, table five? Some of them have names on them, some of them do not. Who wrote that ticket? There's not even a table number on there. Table four. They just got their lobster. Where's table 23? They've got. I need one person at a time. Table I need less 20. talking in the kitchen, please. Table 23 has got no I food. I put something up the window, eight people ask me for something. With Julian having been slammed by the owner's dreadful seating, Ari isn't helping the strained atmosphere with an awkward art lesson. But then, like, this, this is from 1800, and it was painted for an uh, opera house, because you know what it is. Come on. Everybody has to know what that is. It's a handball going across oh, yeah. the Alps with the white elephants. Oh, oh. Everybody should know that. <laughs> <laughs> On the other side of the house, Robert's also busy giving a lecture. This is one of the original signs to the house. There's a lot of history here. Um, Teddy Roosevelt actually was best friends with the man, or a very good friend with the man who actually built the house, Maxwell Ever. Did you always get this backed up? I mean. Yes. Yeah? When I have poor seating, Robert has groups of his friends come in, sitting them at once. OK, so you're waiting for your starters then? Yes. OK, yep. well, let me uh, check on those for you okay, and see how thank it's going. You. OK, yeah. Robert. Yes. This ticket system is bollocks, you know that? Handwritten tickets, no time on there, no proper dates, no coordination. Who trains the front of house team? Who's in charge of the restaurant? Who, who is that? Uh, I would be the host, and then... You'd the be the host? Yes, the chef takes over the kitchen. This place is such a mess. Clearly, Robert has no idea how to run a hotel. Yeah, uh, I've got a uh, So, me too. Yeah, go I'm on. trying What's to matter? straighten out the damn drinks, because they lose. we lost 30-something drinks. Oh, my God. Robert, we lost 30 drinks. At least. I often find drinks not written down or... Just a, a lack of follow through. And it's a big problem when we're trying to make money. There's no communication between the bar and the dining room. So people get served drinks, but no one remembers to charge for them. But we're losing big money. No then. kidding, and they're losing their checks. And I'm going crazy trying to figure out a system. They have hardly any guests and don't charge the ones they do have. No wonder this place is in the red. How does that happen? They're supposed to write the drinks down and then apply them to a table and a room. And then they go into the computer. The ticket system is bogus. And as I feared, seating everyone at once is already causing problems for the staff and the guests. It's not very warm. It's burnt. With guests now suffering and the kitchen falling apart from Robert's ill-managed seating, yeah. come on, I have to step in. Um, just, to, just stop there. You have to be fucking kidding me. This goose liver is burnt to a cinder. Stop. Julian, yes, sir. come around, buddy. I know we're in the shit and we're busy. Food's dying in the window. A foie gras salad. 
I mean, honestly, it's like a piece of fucking beef jerky. Where's Ari? Get me Ari, urgently. I mean, honestly, come on, guys. Hello. I stopped that. I've just said what no. That? What is that? What is that? Foie gras. Well, that's foie gras. Mm. That is not foie gras. It's not funny, guys. No, that is not funny. I mean, I know we're in the ship, but does anyone have any standards here? Yes. Well, can I see them? Yes. Can I see something to hold on to? Because right now, I just want to get out of here. I can only be as good as I am with the tools that I have. I'm embarrassed, and I know that I can do better. I know the staff can do better. First off, no more fucking tickets in the kitchen. Give him 10 minutes to catch up, OK? All right. And Robert, is it possible for the first time, put the phone away, get your jacket off, and fucking dig deep a little bit, yeah? Please? Okay, yeah? To, Somebody? I'm concerned that food is in the window and it's just dying. Entrees on table six are in the window. Entree, send them. They should be sat here. I mean, I... How am I supposed to do everything back are you, here? Are, are you with me? I'm with are you. Are you an owner? I'm with you. Are you an entrepreneur? I keep trying to, you know. You can talk to him. He's your fucking chef. Well, when I try to communicate, he says, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. No, no, no. I can't do it. No, he doesn't. Don't fucking do find it. your balls and tell him you need to talk to him. I found my balls. Do I want him to walk out? Well, he's not going to walk out if you communicate with him. Talk to him then. Well, I have been trying to. So when he finishes it, Send the fucking food. There's always a third dish not ready or a fourth dish. Well, it must ready. be one or two minutes behind, but unless you fucking ask, how are you supposed to fucking know? I have been asking. I said, where's this chicken? So ask food? him again. It's the middle of dinner service at Juniper Hill Inn, and Chef Julian is drowning under a flood of orders. How am I supposed to do everything back here? Owner Roberts has finally decided to get his hands dirty to try and help, but he's utterly incapable of communicating with his chef. When he finishes it, send the fucking food. There's always a third dish not ready or a fourth dish. Well, it not must ready. be one or two minutes behind, but unless you fucking ask, how are you supposed to fucking know? Where is the soup go, Julian? Table 23. Okay. I just told you one minute ago. I need foie gras. Where I know, I have it right behind me. I All right, well, you see, how? Okay. Julian, Yes. that's what you call communication. It's better communication. That's yes. what you call communication, Robert. There's a difference between interrupting and no communication. And when you fucking put those entrees up there, you make sure they go. You've got to start stepping up and fucking dictating a little bit, because this is just madness. I agree. Jesus Christ. It was fuck ups from start to finish, and it was a clusterfuck, and Gordon saw that. Dreadful. With an owner and chef so incapable of communicating with each other, it's no surprise the diners are unhappy, and they're not the only ones. While Robert and Ari are living the dream, their staff are living a nightmare. Hopefully, by gathering everyone in one room, okay. I can get to the root of the problem. I've never seen a hotel and inn in such disarray. There needs to be structure, and there isn't structure. It's just like a scramble. It's a mess. There was no order in the kitchen. Nobody took responsibility for any one thing. No one has been taught any standards in any department. Really, it's like I'm, I'm racing from thing to thing. Nobody knows what the other one's doing. There's nobody here that is in control, willing to take charge. I did 40 fucking dinners by myself tonight. I could help you, and you've Excuse never me. asked. I can cook the rack of lamb. Excuse me. Bragging about Excuse making me. one plate is nothing to brag about. Excuse me. Excuse me. I am the boss. You can't call yourself the boss if you don't fucking pay them. I mean, honestly, do you think that's normal, Ari? Do you think that's the way to look after your team? Every pay period, there is a problem with the checks. Every pay period, there's and a it, problem with the checks. And a lot of I don't know what the problem is, but I know it's the same two people And do you get it. to know about it first, or do you have to go ask him for your salary? I always ask for it. That's absolutely wrong. And the reason is... He's lying. No, 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 he's not lying. I would rather have them wait than write a check that's going to bounce. What? Because I don't... How about telling him it's not going to be ready? Rather than having to ask, like some skivvy. Cap in hand, please, sir. May I get paid? Anybody else have to wait? Yes. Mm -hmm. How long? Five days more. I have two days. Barbara? I had to wait five weeks. You had to what? I had to wait five weeks before I got a paycheck. Five weeks? Mm -hmm. Guys, you come in and you work your ass off. The least these two guys can do is pay your fucking salary on time. I don't have a secretary, Gordon. I'm sorry. I'm trying to communicate with brides. I'm trying to send out things. I have to have peaceful time in order to do my work. Are you always this pathetic? I am not pathetic. Well, when are you going to stand up and start showing some respect for your team 
and start growing a pair to sort of understand the mess you're in. I understand the mess we're in. Right. I'm fighting for the team. You dug the fucking hole. Yes, we and did. And put them in it. So they're fucked. They don't have to work here. Oh, my God. I mean, God. you know, the bottom line is... Oh, how dare you? No, they, they don't have to work paycheck. here. How dare you? How fucking dare you? They don't have to work here. Oh, my God. I... 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 You can't, disrespectful, can't. disgusting man. They don't have to work here. I don't think you realise how fucking lucky you are. Because if it wasn't for one, two, three, four, five, six of them, you'd be driving that RV miles away from here. Robert definitely needs a reality check. It's life or death right now. And I don't think he actually realizes what kind of jeopardy this place is in. It's not all about you, Robert. Robert's world, Robert's bubble, Robert's dream. You're not the lord of the manor, and you're not the great Gatsby. You're, 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 you're Robert. It's only me in here that Excuse thinks... me, excuse me. Go Bye. on, then, you pompous fuck. Excuse Just... me. Don't talk to me like well, that. Well, what's wrong with it? I want to know what's Don't wrong with it. Don't speak to me like that. Well, I'm that. telling you, you get your head me. out of your ass and start getting a little fucking real. You still haven't got it that this place is sinking. Start paying a little bit more attention to the guys on the ground. Understand how hard it is out there. Forget your fucking antique roadshow and start from the bottom running this business. You're right, there's no structure. It's fragmented. The team need a leader. They need a structure. They need a mentor. They need some support. And all they get is nitpicks. What kind of motivation is that? All I've heard since I've been here is that you're just blaming people. Well, I'm blaming you for not taking charge. Get fucking real. So far, my stay at Vermont's Juniper Hill Inn has been shocking. Just, yeah, that smells like shit. And the root of the problem is beginning to show. You don't get paid? I've seen with my own eyes how poorly this place is run. But now I need to see what happens to the bottom line. <laughs> when Robert and Ari use Juniper Hill as their own private <laughs> playground, entertaining all their friends. I'm hoping estate manager Ryan can help me. A lot of the staff are telling me their um, friends pop up from Manhattan and come and spend weekends and sit, drink, and be merry. Are these guys actually paying? Uh, no. Robert had a slew of friends come and stay for free and eat for free for weeks at a time, and that's why they've been losing money since I've been here. What do the colors mean? Help me understand that. Green means they're paid in full. Red means they have not paid. Oh, my god. I have 50 room nights. That's between November and December. Well, just two average, months. they're $200 a night. But that's... It's like $10,000 in revenue. That's $10,000. They're running it in almost a clubhouse. like a clubhouse, almost like they're trying to buy friends. And Robert prides himself as the superior business person. Robert walks around like he's the king, and that everybody hears a bunch of hicks. This is insane. I mean, this is like a private club for him. He's worked with the servers before and accepted a portion of the tips. Oh my god. Fucking hell. He's taking their bloody tips. And this guy is mad. I can't believe this. He doesn't pay them, and then he takes their tips. I've got to talk to him. How are we? Barbara, how are you today? Good. I just out of interest, is it true that Robert takes a percentage of the tips? Yes. He does? Yeah. And what percentage of tips does he take? What we get. He gets the same as you? Yeah. It's really hard to keep track of the tips. I, it, the, the bookkeeping, it, it yeah, doesn't, so. it seems inconsistent. But why is he touching the tips? He because. did the same thing for New Year's. They felt that because they needed to cover part of the band that they took the tips off. A uh, VAT tip. That's why we don't make anything here. An owner has no right to take the staff's tips. And with all the room and food comps Robert is giving his friends, it's no wonder the inn is struggling. The staff shouldn't be subsidizing the inn so Robert and his friends get to live the high life for free. It's sickening. I have to confront him and figure out this nonsense. I just had a look round and I... Just, I, I am flabbergasted. I'm going to be really frank. I'm going to try to stay so calm. But if I smell BS that you start going into denial, I'm going to let rip again. I studied your reservations. Last November, December, 49 rooms were given out for free. And on top of that, they ate, they drank. For nothing. I'm not even tipping. And I'm just, what the fuck are you doing? 
tell me why. I thought I needed to have somebody here. Rather than having two other guests in the hotel all by themselves, to have more energy. No, You're I making it worse. Not only do your friends not leave tips, but when people do tip the staff, you take a share. On nights that I work, I did take tips. That is disgusting. Why do you think you got a right to that? I have tried to work with my staff to teach them that this is the way I want service done. You're so bad. I take a percentage of the tips based on the amount of work that I do. Yeah. And who does the books on those tips? Uh, Ari. <laughs> But if I'm doing their job and I can't get it across to them... You're the owner. You're not the head bus boy. You're not the barman. You're the fucking owner. What I was saying wasn't getting through. So the psychology was that if I started to take tips, they would maybe pay attention to that. That is insane. It's the worst management model I've ever heard in my entire life. Do you honestly need a 70-year-old lady's tips? No. So 15, 20 grand's worth of complimentary rooms in the food? in a two-month period. I'm just, well, it doesn't I, make sense. I have to tell you that the reason Please. I did that was because I thought that they would at least tip my staff. But they didn't tip your staff. Sorry to piss on your bonfire. Well, then I will call my friends and I will tell them, look, what happened? You haven't got the fucking balls to call your friends and ask them to leave a tip. Yes, I do. Call them, then. and ask them, I thought at least, out of generosity, you would have left a couple of hundred dollars tip for the team. Hello? Dana? Yeah? It's Robert. You stayed here recently, and um, I was under the impression that you and Greg left a tip. Did you leave a no, tip? I left some money with you. No, 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 but you said you were going to send additional tip. I think my time's done here. That was one of the things that I was hoping you had done. Sorry, and I'll... I left the no, money no, no. with you. Well, wait a minute. There's others to call, too. Gordon. Oh, dear. Gordon has left. He thinks I'm stealing my staff's tips. Unbelievable. Joke. Hey, Ray, it's Robert. Did you tip the staff? Because they're telling people that they haven't been tipped. I left the money with you. Oh, so I need to do that. I... I have somehow lost that. Fucking idiot. Gordon left thinking I'm a liar. I feel as if I'm, I'm at the end of my rope. I mean, I'm going to lose everything. I'm going to have to start all over again if this doesn't work. And I just don't seem that I can, can do it anymore. <laughs> no, I can't do it. just left Juniper Hill after catching Robert in a lie about his staff getting tips. I was under the impression that you and Greg left a tip. It, did you leave a tip? Well, I left some money with you. The guy is maddening, and I don't know if I've got it in me to help fix the place. I'm so pissed off with Robert right now. Honestly, I cannot stand any more of his bloody lies. This guy doesn't deserve the team that is in his hotel. He treats everyone so badly. When you're in your fucking kitchen all day long and you're on the internet instead of actually trying to perfect a menu, he doesn't even pay them properly. I had to wait five weeks before I got a paycheck. I work very long days yeah. and I haven't been paid in three weeks. How can someone so rich not pay the people he employs? That's something I simply won't stand for. As angry as I am, I feel I have to help the staff get paid. And I have an idea of just how to do it. I'm going to hire a team of white club movers to assemble all of Robert's most valuable antiques from the storage units, the basement, and around the inn. I'm hoping when confronted with all the money he's wasted, I can convince Robert to sell some of his vast collection to pay his staff. If this is going to work, I must stay calm while I talk to Robert. Um, I've come back. Not for you, but for the staff. They deserve better. We're losing, on average, fifteen to $20,000 a month. And we are short. But you have a serious hobby of sort of an art collector, an art dealer. I mean, you could open a museum. How many pieces do you have in there? Oh, my god. Hundreds. What are we talking about? Everything collectively. All those beautiful oil paintings, the expensive stuff. At a suitable auction, um, maybe $300,000. $300,000. And that would supplement you for the next 12 months, 18 months? 
yes, that would certainly get us through. That would get us through two years. Um, right. There's something I want you to see. Yeah. Okay. I'd like you to come with me, please. If there's one thing we need right now, is an injection of funds. Wow. Robert, no man alive needs this much stuff. Walking in, it was shocking. Now, antiques, oil paintings, silverware. Does it not, I mean, frustrate you that we're sat with all this, and yet we can't pay our staff properly? There's someone I'd like you to meet. She's the head auctioneer at Bonhams in Boston. Amy, good morning. Good morning, Gordon. Uh, nice to see you. Gordon, great to see you. Likewise, thank you so much for coming. Um, we're in the shit, basically, and this stuff needs to go. We need to raise as much money as possible. So what's the best price we can get for all this stuff? What you have here doesn't read as a collection to me. It's kind of an accumulation. A lot of copies of things, or if they are right. of the period that they're supposed to be, there's some condition issues. Um, I would say about 25,000. Say that again? 25,000. $25,000. All this? All this. Amy's opinion on our, our things was shocking. And I can't really believe that. And the painting? The painting is a copy. And not a good one, I'm afraid. How much is that worth? I can't imagine what someone would pay for it. It's, it's really very low value. Wow. Robert, I thought you said it was expensive, 18th century. Well, it's dated. I dated 17th century. It is, but it's not actually of that period at all. I'm sorry. Did you know that was a copy? I did not know that that was a copy. Lots of copies. Reproductions. Reproductions. We were hoping in the ballpark of three to 400,000. 25 grand for everything. Yeah. That won't even get us through the next five weeks. Even all this amazing silverware. I put $100 on everything on this table. $100? What about this? First period, this is Sheffield. Yeah, it's plate. What about this? 175 bucks. Th those are Baccarat candlesticks? They just don't bring very much at auction, I'm afraid. Uh, is this the kind of collection that you'd be willing to sell at Bonhams? Would you take the whole lot? No, we wouldn't. Wow. We would okay. have to say no. We're floating as if we've got this asset full of three or $400,000 worth of antiques. We haven't, and we're distracted with the bits of crap in here. It was a wake-up call. Thank you, that's sure. the start. My pleasure. I appreciate Thanks. it. Thank you. It means that we don't have the backup that we thought we had. We've paid more money for fucking storage than they're worth. Than they're worth. Does that not bring it home a little bit earlier that you need to be an innkeeper, not a part-time antiques dealer? Because you fooled me. You gave me the tour and I thought, wow, this guy is, uh, he's got serious cash to burn. But right now, we're even further in the shit than I thought we were. So the pressure intensifies. You need to focus on fixing the business because that's what's going to generate sufficient funds to keep this place open. And I don't think you quite realize that your staff, they're miserable. They don't like Ari's barking. Excuse me. Bragging about Excuse me. One... I am the boss. You bitching. When you're in your fucking kitchen all day long and you're on the goddamn internet instead of actually trying to perfect a menu. It's not a nice atmosphere for the staff currently. And if they quit, you're fucked. They are staff. They're not pigs that live in the fucking basement. If you think that's not the case, and you're that delusional, and you're not prepared to listen to anything I'm saying, you're fucked. Sell the inn, sell this shit in here, and give up. I've just come back to try and save Juniper Hill Inn, and I thought I could use some of the owner's vast array of antiques to get the cash flowing. But I've just discovered... I would say about 25000 $25,000. All this? All this. That I was wrong. That won't even get us through the next five weeks. With no assets, the challenge to make this place work is bigger than ever. Tomorrow, I have to start the process of change. Before I get stuck in, there's one thing I want to try. Oh, God. It's bloody roasting. Oh, fuck. My 
feet are freezing now. Molly, now it's time to see if I can get through to Robert and Ari. Can I just borrow you for two minutes? I want to show you something. Yes, yeah, both of you together. I'd like you to come up to my uh, room. Thank you. If this place is going to work as a business, Robert and Ari need to hear some home truths oh. about how their paying customers really feel about their precious inn. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for uh, popping into my room. <laughs> how was your stay last night? Well, we didn't know where to go when we walked in, so we walked around and around until we found somebody to help us check in. I was slightly disorientated when I checked in as well. I mean, there's no signs in terms of reception, no. front desk, or bar, no, 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 lounge, no, no, no. or... And how were the rooms? I had space heaters to heat the room up. Oh, really? Yeah, three rooms. When I checked the room, it was like a sauna. Look, he sounds activated. Raise your hands if you'd come back, please. No, not like it is. Not like it is. There's someone I'd like to hear from who hasn't said anything yet. He is a lead inspector of the diamond collection of hotel and inns across America. In a nutshell, very disappointed. Didn't meet expectations. From the moment I walked in, with no greeting, no check-in area, I was totally lost. And the bar's a joke. You should not even be there, folks. It looks as if it's set up for a wedding. The hospitality is nice, but everything else fails. How do you feel? I don't want my guests to have that experience. You know, our goal is to please people. That's why we're in the in business. And we've obviously fallen really short. Um, For me, I think that's positive feedback. So I'm grateful entirely. Let me tell you, thank you all. Can I uh, keep you two here, please? Yes. Thank you. The guest feedback please. has certainly been constructive. Thank you. Thank you. And Robert's Thank you. even using a word I've never heard from him before. We are sorry. But I'm shocked by Ari's response to the guest complaints. What's the matter with you? Why are you so angry with guests? Why are you running an inn when you're so bitter? You look like you don't give a shit. I'm not saying that I don't like the guests, but uh, if you have ever been an innkeeper, it's 24-7. No one is more touched by what these people said. Well, well Ari is I mean, clearly, but... Uh, I would love this to be our, our private home. But I am. It's a lost cause. And Ari does have a different way of dealing sure. with I things. see that. Based on my experience, I would seriously request both of you actually sit down and reconsider whether you should be in this business going forward. It's clear to me that Ari isn't cut out for the hospitality business. And even though Robert now understands how he's let down his guests, he needs to understand that he's also let down his staff and failed to recognise their potential. I've got a plan that will help Robert to see what he's doing wrong and how he can fix things in his kitchen. I've asked Chef Julian to cook three dishes from Robert's expensive old menu and three new dishes of his very own creation. Once he's finished, we're going to pretend I cooked the new ones and see what Robert says. Crucially, Julian's dishes are all ones that could be served on a $29 menu, half what Robert currently charges. Look at that. $74, $29. Let's go. Good luck. OK? Yes. I can't wait to see what Robert thinks of Julian's affordable food when he thinks that I've cooked it. I asked him to cook a three-course meal. Yeah, he cooked his lamb, his crab cake, and the dessert. That's the $74 version. I cooked the other meal. I got hold of some chicken, some sprouts, and I used the crab and a butterscotch pudding with some caramelised popcorn. $29, that's what those three courses are going to cost. Yeah. Okay. Julian's three new dishes are fantastic and fairly priced. That would go a long way towards bringing guests back through the front door. Now that Robert thinks I've cooked them, I bet he loves them. Talk to me. Excellent. Fabulous. And the um, Brussels sprouts are really good, too. Mm -hmm. You've actually leafed them, and mm -hmm. it's very pretty. Mm -hmm. well, this is a much better value. I've never heard you use that word value. And we could get two for the price of one. What we should do. So yeah. my menu or Julian's menu? Your menu. My menu. Now, I'm flattered, but there's something I need to tell you. I didn't make any of this. Julian cooked everything. I felt at that very moment that I had done Julian a disservice. Robert, have you got something you'd like to say to your chef, Julian? I'm sorry that I haven't given you the freedom to do what you need to do. I guess I have to eat it and say that I have restricted him from being who he can be, which is, is really difficult. And um, I have to say that this is delicious. Now that owner Robert's heard from the guests... Very disappointed. Didn't meet expectations. 
and sample the kind of affordable, high-quality food his chef can cook when given the chance. Excellent. Fabulous. I didn't make any of this. Julian cooked everything. I hope this is all starting to sink in with him. Well, how are you feeling? I'm feeling all sorts of things. I mean, there's, of course, fear. But surely hope, too. Your chef's food was amazing. Absolutely. It was an epiphany. I feel regretful that I have come across in the way I have and that I haven't exhibited to my staff the leadership they needed and the compassion that apparently I'm, I must be void of. I think for you to tell them how you're feeling, what you're going to commit to, how important they are for you. I know that this place wouldn't be here without them. And I'm wanting to do everything I can to show them that we can make this work. I'm glad Robert's on a new path. I just hope it's not too late for his staff to learn to trust him again. You are all valuable to me and to Ari and to Juniper Hill. And I fear that we have not always expressed that. And we want to show you that we are going to make a difference. Sorry for your paychecks being late. Sorry for taking part of the tips. Sorry for not communicating, because that was the reality. And one that I'm not proud of, that we're not proud of, but one that we certainly can correct. And that's what we want to do. The business is short of cash flow. I thought there was a substantial collection of three to four hundred thousand dollars worth of assets. I mean, why don't you explain exactly? In the things that were assembled here, um, they said, lucky if we got 25,000. We are on our ass. It is going to be difficult. And I think Robert has realized the bubbles burst. And he understands the truth to where we are. I think there's a perception that we are these wealthy magnets coming in and Lord of the Manor sort of things. That's not who we are. You know, I knew there was some um, bad situations here, but I stayed because I want to be here and I want to help him. And uh, I believe what he says. And I'm very proud of you, Robert. You're the man that I've always known and loved. It's, he's coming back. I'm glad to see that, you know, we're facing facts and uh, that's the only way we're going to get out of this. Agreed. Thank you. Ryan, what do you think of what Robert just said? I wanted to stand up and clap. I did too. <laughs> I feel like I'm working for somebody who can actually run a business when I hear things like that that can succeed. I've never seen Robert so serious. This is actually really a life-changing thing for him. And I feel like I want to be part of the changes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank the truth's boy. important. It's humbling to have to admit some of the things that haven't gone right. But at the same time, it's energizing to see that people really do care for us and care for Juniper Hill. That is what's going to make us successful. I'm impressed with the way Robert dealt with his staff meeting. I've got real hope that he can make this place work, but he has another lesson to learn. He thinks people aren't spending money at Juniper Hill because of the recession, but I think it's the snobbish atmosphere and the high prices that have kept people away. I'm taking Robert to a fantastic local brewery to show him how a warm welcome can translate into money in the bank. Let's go and have a beer. Let's get in with the locals. Trust me, they won't beat you up. <laughs> You are like a fish out of water right now, honestly. <laughs> You're like a vegetarian in the middle of a big steak tartare. Look at you. <laughs> no, no. Well, I love the people from our region. The Upper Valley is filled with amazing people. The Juniper Hill is not I filled know. with local people. Wouldn't you welcome this atmosphere? Oh. oh, yeah. In your stately house? Absolutely. Everyone is welcome. Stand on there and tell them you need them. Off we go. If I could have your attention, please. I'm Robert. I'm the innkeeper at Juniper Hill Inn. We just want to tell everybody we'd love to have you all up at Juniper Hill Inn. And uh, we need the help right now. So if you can come up and have dinner or just have a drink and just say hi, it would be great. Thank you. Thanks. Well done. If Robert can always be that inviting to the locals, he surely has it in him to be the leader of the inn. When was the last time you brought Ari here for beer? We haven't been here probably in six months. How was he after you spoke? to the team like that? You know, the, the, the interesting thing with Ari is yeah. his exterior is Finnish. You know, he's very stern. stern, but he feels deeply. He can't express it, though, can he? He can't. 
He's emotionally constipated. I think he gave up. That can't come across to the staff. That can't come across to the customer. So no. you, you've got to almost isolate yourself from that. But he's getting through it. But he's not going to be the face. He's not going to be the ink. No, he's not. But he can provide a phenomenal amount of support behind the scenes. Cheers to that. It's been a tough week here at Juniper Hill Inn, and owner Robert's pompous ways have been maddening. I don't have a secretary, Gordon. I'm sorry. Are you always this pathetic? But he's finally come off his pedestal to get on the same level as his team. You are all valuable to Juniper Hill, and we want to show you that we are going to make a difference. Overnight, my team has been working on a remarkable transformation, and with relaunch upon us, it's a chance for a fresh start for everyone. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let me introduce you to the new Juniper Hill Inn. It's no longer a hangout for the super rich <laughs> or your mates getting freebies. Yeah, it's now a nice, warm and very welcoming country inn. And trust me, everyone is welcome, whether you're driving up here in a Mercedes or even a pickup truck. <laughs> you ready? Yes. yes we let's are. go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. Please, come in. Come through. The Great Hall is a beautiful room, but it was hidden by vast amounts of furniture. Oh, my That's goodness. Nice. Look at this. My team have edited the collection and created a feeling of comfort and space. When I walked in the Great Hall, it felt like a different room. Gordon put together this amazing place. It feels comfortable and warm. You have a spacious, gracious, warm reception room. Look at it. Gone is that hideous makeshift bar. Thank you. Gone. <laughs> Guests know where to go because they have proper signs. You ready to see the dining room? Yes. yes. Come through. Oh, oh it's warm and welcoming. So oh, I love this. No longer feels like your grandmother's parlor. It really is a dining room. It's what you expect from a country inn. But, you know, it has an identity. Right. Gone are those hideous sofas that <laughs> nobody can sit and eat dinner in. Ari, what do you think? Very nice. Very you nice. like it? Very open. Excellent. I'll show you my bedroom. Okay. Please. <laughs> Everybody else can come too, please. You ready? We're ready. In you go. Do you know what's wrong with this room? Nothing. You don't need to do anything to them. The only thing wrong was the smell in room one, and the plumber has taken care of that. The guest rooms are the absolute highlight of your inn. That meant something, because it meant we were on the right track. We just needed a, a, a better directions. Now, the key to filling this is to charge sensible prices. I would rather have the room sold at Absolutely. a cheaper price and have an 85% occupancy rate across the year. Bring yeah. the prices down, fill it, let them enjoy this quality. The stunning bedrooms didn't need changing, but there's one room that did need a significant overhaul in order to bring in much needed cash flow. Now, there's one more little thing I want to show you downstairs. OK. You ready? <laughs> I'm ready. Let's go. Come with me. OK. We need to attract the local community. I'd like to welcome you to the Blue Bar. Oh. Blue Bar. Oh. Oh, my God. Look at this. <laughs> oh. Oh, my goodness. Ari, are you thrilled? The best new local bar in Windsor. Fantastic. This is so great. Walk in and see the people sitting there and the games on the tables and the beautiful drinks. It was very emotional. I loved it. The Blue Bar is exactly what the town of Windsor, Vermont and Juniper Hill Inn need. I'm hoping it will be popular, especially on a day like today, when the inn hosts its first ever Sunday lunch service. The staff are all getting ready for the arrival of their lunch guests. Five, six, seven, eight. So you've got four tables each. But while everybody else is busy, Ari seems lost and needs reminding of his role here at the inn. I'm here. Oh, jeez. Right. <laughs> Okay. Had to go the doing? other way. Are you in? Are you out? Are you doing the checks? What are you doing? I was checking in people. You're That's... checking in. But I thought that was the great. I thought you were checking in people. If you want to check them in and Shut take them up? That'll be great. I, would Thanks. you be so kind? Just two yes. seconds. I'm so sorry. Would you continue that? Of course. Can I just have you for thirty seconds. Yeah. Sure. Come this way. I thought you were going to leave the front of the house to Robert. I thought you were going to be the back of the house. Look, one thing is that Robert asked me to to check in people with, uh, because he had to uh, take people to the dining room. <sighs> yeah, I know, but we have a saying in England. Yes. Too many chefs spoil the broth. You're not a natural innkeeper. Oh, okay. okay. He needs your help. Yes. But yes, behind the is. scenes. Yes. Explain to Robert that you're going to support him from behind the scenes. Yes. Please. Okay. Sure. Please. I'm going to do that. I think Ari has finally got the picture and understands that he needs to play to his strengths. I really hope that things can continue to improve now.
Come on, Sophie. We better remove the dog. She's going to eat the food. <coughs> Sophie, our poodle, she shouldn't be in there. I mean, it's a, it's a place where we eat. Come on, Sophie. Come on, come, come, come. That's not for you. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, honey. Excuse me. Come on, come on. I take come care come. of the dog, OK? Excuse me. The dog shouldn't be in the bar. He's on the seats eating the food. Really? I am the boss, OK? What Don't ever say? talk to me that way again. Excuse me. Don't ever, and I mean it. I'll be in my room, and I don't need to be yelled at. I'm coming towards the end of my stay at Vermont's Juniper Hill Inn, and I thought we'd turn the corner. But as the inn's first ever Sunday lunch service approaches, assistant innkeeper Sarah has gone missing. Where's Sarah gone? I haven't seen Sarah in about a half an hour. Is she OK? I don't know. You don't know? OK, just asking. Has Sarah gone home? What? Has Sarah gone home? No. The team can't afford to be a man down. I've got to find her. Who is it? It's me, Sarah's Gordon. Oh, hi, Gordon. Are you OK? Oh, no. Uh, what? Hold on a second. Dear, oh, dear. Darling, I thought you joined us for lunch. Oh, thanks. I'm not going to. What's the matter? You want to come in? Yeah, you look terrible. What's the matter? Oh, I'm just really That's upset. Fine. I don't want to get upset. You were with us half an hour ago. Customers are in the bar. I know. The first table just arrived. I just expect you to be there in terms of you're part of this team. I know, but I, I'm sick of being yelled at by Ari. I'm sick of it, Gordon. When did he yell at you? Just a few minutes ago, because I asked him to take the dog out of the dining room. Naturally. It's his dog, and it's sitting on the bar furniture. Okay. Please come back down. Oh. Buck up and come down. Nobody's ever seen me break down in tears in this inn. It's never happened before. Just come back downstairs. OK. Please? Yeah, I will. Gordon. OK. Yeah, I want to help I don't want to see you upset. And the girls need you down there. They do. And I'm just, I'm just really <laughs> mad at them. No, well, let me go and have a word with Ari. This is ridiculous. Get yourself ready. The place is full of locals, and they'd love to see you too. OK. Please. Uh, smiley. Yes? Good yes. Yes, I'll bounce back. I'm not sure why Ari is snapping at his staff, but it just proves my gut was right about his place being behind the scenes. Ari? <laughs> yes? <laughs> I've just found Sarah upstairs in floods of tears. Everything OK? No, we had a little run-in because we both are very strong people. She snapped at me and I snapped back. Do you think the dog should be running around in the bar? No, no when they are guests. Um, so was she right or wrong? She was right. Would it be appropriate for you to apologise to her? Do you, do you oh, feel yeah. that you're yeah. responsible from behind the scenes? Is there any way we could just, for this first Sunday lunch, sure. try to keep the team together? OK. I think Ari's heart is in the right place, but his tone is all wrong for an innkeeper. He needs to be the power behind the throne. I'm sure this is going to be one of the busiest days yet at Juniper Hill Inn. And I need to remind Chef Julian to make good use of his sous chef Nida if he's going to have any chance of being successful. Julian's proved to Robert and I that he has the talent and the potential in the kitchen. Now he just needs the help to execute. I know you're adamant the fact that you're going to work on your own, but you're not a one-man band, yeah? Yes, yeah, Chef. Encourage, entice. Over to the stove. The local community have responded to Robert's invitation, and there's a great atmosphere as people turn up to check out the bar and sample the new menu I put together with Chef Julian. Tara, nice to see you. Welcome to Juniper Hill. Hi, Hi you dear. Nice Hi. to see you. As well as new arrivals, the inn has a return guest, Hotel Inspector Steve Talon. His first visit was a disaster. Very disappointed. Didn't meet expectations. From the moment I walked in, with no greeting, I was totally lost. This is Robert and his team's chance to prove to Steve that they've learned their lesson. I hope this time Hello they're there. flawless. How are you, Mr. Talon? Nice to see you. Nice to see you yes. again. Welcome. So this is our new menu. OK, what's going next? Coming up next, we have one trout. The key to this place running smoothly is communication among the entire staff. But Chef Julian still doesn't seem to get that. How long for the first flat iron, please, Nida? Medium rare. Medium rare. Ask her, Julian. Medium rare. Talk to Nida. I don't care what it's about, the fucking weather. I don't care, but talk to her, OK? Come on, you got to talk. I just said, come on. And she can put things on a plate for you, just refusing to talk to her. And it's going to be so fucking painful now. I simplified the menu in order to get it so much easier for you. You know that? Yes, Chef. And the menu was designed for you to open up and talk, OK? Yes, Chef. Look at me. Yes, now Chef. Broaden your mind out. And all you do is one plate, focus. Next plate, focus. And I just want you to open up a little bit. She's there to help. Thank you. You know what? Let me do this. Just help with the skillet. Help with the skillet. Fucking hell. Julian! Yes, come here. Fucking hell. 
now. What's the matter with you? You've just shut down on me. Now, do you want to give me your jacket and I'll do it for you? No, Chef. It's not difficult. I know, Chef. Can you do this? Open up. Come on. You've just shut down. With Robert working well with the team... OK, thank you so much. ..and Ari staying out of the way, the bar is bustling. How are you? Welcome. What can I get you to drink? But Chef Julian needs to raise his game and start communicating. If we're going to make today a success... You've just shut down on me. Open up, please. Get it together. Let's go. You'll be at four minutes at that table. So you do one plate, I do one plate. Is that good? All right, so then you get, with the lamb shank, then you get some lamb glaze, which is right here. Julian, nice, much better. Look yes, at me, yes, much better. Yes, Chef. Good. How is everybody out there? Chicken. 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 Wow. The locals are definitely noticing a change it's here. It was wonderful. It's very good. I was very surprised. Perfect. As you're saying, it's perfect for me. Great. Time to see if the hotel inspector has to. Hi, oh, sir. Good to see you again. Good to see you, too. Recognise a few changes? In some ways, I didn't recognise it at all. I really felt so good. What, the uh, entrance hall in terms of...? The total openness, the welcoming, but the signs everywhere. When you walked in, was it warm? Was it right? Oh, it's great warmth. Now I feel it, it has that diamond collection feel. Is that a good That's job? News. Yeah. Enjoy lunch. Appreciate it. Pork's amazing. OK. Thank you. I'll try. Thank you. There's a great buzz at the inn. Sir, can I have a second? Yes. I hope that's not all about to change. I'm really busy. I just want to hear that. I'm sorry about what happened. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Okay. I mean, okay. I'm trying to help, Barry, oh, no. and you're, oh, no. you're snarling yeah, yeah. me a lot. Yeah, I'm sorry. This food is affordably priced. It's really, really tasty. And it's nice to know a nice yeah. place to send people to right. get a drink and relax yeah. and everything, and that's hard in the area, so that's great. Robert and Ari's communication has improved by leaps and bounds since I've been at the inn. Let's go back. But actions speak louder than words, and I think Robert is starting to understand that. I just wanted to tell you that um, I really appreciate all the extra effort you're giving. Not just this week, but the entire time you've been here. And this is your paycheck, literally, because we know you need it. We wish we had more. We put $100 extra in there for you, just so you have a little bit extra, because we really do appreciate you, Ryan. So, thanks. Thank you very much. You and I are going to bring this back, and Ari's going to join us. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't been that emotionally moved in a long time. I, I feel like it's all been worth it now. I just, I feel like I, it's appreciated. What a week. I think this business is on the road to recovery, and Robert and his team, with Ari in the background, can really make this place work, because once the locals invest in this place, word is going to spread big time. Beautiful. It's time for me to say my goodbyes, but with the crowd enjoying themselves in the bar and loving the great value in the dining room, it's a hard place to leave. Really good. This is nice company. This is, and yeah. We're sharing the lamb shakes. Oh, lamb. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Uh, right. Finally, you seem to have got this under control. Yes. Yes, chef. And you're opening up. Yes, chef. Don't stop talking. Yes, chef. Communicate. Good job. Thank you, chef. He might have beat a few people down, but then he brought a few people right back up, and uh, that was necessary. I'm just glad he didn't smack me with a spatula. Ari? Copy. I've come to say goodbye. I was uh, doing Look my after paychecks. Yourself. You're okay. writing paychecks? Yes. Good luck with the place. Okay. It's a business. Absolutely. Look after yourself. Uh -huh. Look after Robert, uh -huh. and support him in all the right places. Thank you. Best wishes. We are very grateful for him that he has patience for us. <laughs> Because it, it's not uh, easy to restructure molded minds. Look after yourself, yes? Okay. Look after yourself. Okay. Mike, how are you feeling? I'm feeling great. And it seems like you've got this under control. I'm going to keep it under control. Well, the staff are doing the job, the bar's functioning, the dining room's functioning, kitchen's functioning. That's good, that's beautiful. Ari's in the RV. And there are people. And they seem to be having a good time. You're on the track now. We're on track. I have a little present for you. Stay there. Having Gordon come to Juniper Hill has meant a lot to us. It was harder than hell, but ultimately, I know it's going to do great things for our staff and for our town. This is something that money cannot buy, but this week, you've earned it. Now, the most important thing, please keep it up. This is your side to be part of the amazing setup, the Diamond Collection. Thank you. You deserve this. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. 
safe journey home. He really did awaken me, put a fire in me, and I want him to come back and say, you really did it. That's our goal. Take care. <laughs> Bye-bye. What a beautiful day. I can't believe those storage units are still there. If I was Robert, I'd lock Ari in one of them. <laughs> Surrounded by stunning lakes and close to two major ski resorts, Coeur d'Alene is one of Idaho's premier vacation destinations. It's also home to the Roosevelt Inn. The inn is a 16-bedroom converted schoolhouse owned and run by one of its former students, John Hoff. The Roosevelt Inn is the first hotel I've ever actually owned. I was up here signing the papers and I called my wife, Tina, and I say, we now own the Roosevelt Inn. And all of a sudden I hear this, because <laughs> she started crying. I did not want to buy the hotel, but John really did. I have told John many times that he won't be cold in the ground, and I'm on my way home to Kentucky. Okay, no, I'm not going to cry anymore. I'm so tired of crying. Stop, stop, stop. The Roosevelt Inn is not just hell for Tina. It's hell for the guests who have to put up with the consequences of John's eccentric behavior. Sorry, we're not trying to be a pain. Yes, you are. I would say that the hotel is struggling because it's dated, it's old. God, it smells funny in there, though. It smells old. Probably because it is old. And the food coming out of the inn's shoebox-sized kitchen is as bad as the decor. But not by the oh, Strong fish flavor. Oblivious to the problems, John's performance never stops. I'll ask you questions, you'll give me answers. I'll ask questions, you'll give answers. I'll ask you questions, you'll give me answers. As John is more focused on playing dress up. How was that, Watson? Than on being an innkeeper. John refuses to grow old gracefully. It's Halloween for John every day. He loves to dress up. It's the curse! It's the bloody curse! Once a month at the Roosevelt, we put on a murder mystery and dinner. How's everything going in here for you? Fine. Okay. I basically do everything. Uh, you want to finish making up this bed and I'll do the bathroom? OK, Maybe. great. I feel my dad doesn't appreciate my mom. My mom works three times harder than my dad does. There are times that I'll come in and she's out busy doing something and he's sitting on the couch reading a book. As the business has suffered, so has John and Tina's relationship. We actually had to go through marriage counseling. I don't think John understands the sacrifice I've made. Unless I can get this place on the road to recovery, John and Tina will lose everything. If I lose the Roosevelt, I don't just lose my job, I lose my home. I become unemployed and homeless in one fell swoop. Dang it! Uh, I don't think we're gonna pull out of this one. I'm here in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. I seriously hope this place is better than the other shitholes I've stayed in. Oh my god. Look at that. They say all publicity is good publicity, but with the billboard that old fashioned, I'm not so sure. You're fucking joking, aren't you? Come on. The Roosevelt Inn bed and breakfast. It's like something out of the Adams family. The Roosevelt School. The place looks grim from the outside. Hello. Welcome to the Roosevelt. Good to see you. I recognize that voice. You're Gordon Ramsay. Okay. Well, <laughs> good to see you. My God, look at those chairs there. Are they from the school? They are. Those came out of the first grade classroom. Well, look, you almost fit. A, a reception for dwarfs or just? <laughs> first impression from the outside. It's almost like walking to a funeral parlor. Oh. It smells like shit as well. What is that? Is that, did the dog do a, oh boy, I sure hope not. Oh, Rohan, Jesus, man. Jesus. This is our dining room. Who's the chef here? I saw a billboard of a guy with the most hideous hat on, <laughs> covered in trees and like this six foot hat. <laughs> That's me. It's kind of uh, grown into Jean Pierre, the mad French chef at the Roosevelt. Because you're in Coeur d'Alene, is a French named town, you know, so we must cook the fabulous food, wear this outfit. <laughs> now you'll see uh, school photos yes. down the hallway here, and these are of kids that went to school here at the Roosevelt. And the ones with the arrows pointing at the really cute, adorable little boy, that's me, of course, because I went to school here. Are you went to school? My now? elementary school. Who wants to live in their old school? It's like getting a detention that never ends. The guests get to hang out down here with the dogs and watch TV. You are kidding me. You can't smell those dogs? Oh, yes, I can. The dogs, actually, believe it or not, Gordon, are one of the highlights here. Now you're sounding deluded. What's next? 
our little ballroom or our multi-purpose room. Oh, come on. Rohan, you're not supposed to be in this room. Don't you think this place could at least had some form of makeover? Well, sadly, Gordon, we renovated this room four years ago. This is new. Stop. No. This room looks like it was last decorated in 1908, not 2008. And how much did you spend on this? 54,000. 54,000? Five, four. Yeah. Not 5,400, 54,000. Yeah, I know, lovely, huh? Christ almighty. And does it generate money? No. I can't believe anyone would want to rent that space. It's hideous. I'm dying to have a look upstairs. It can't get any worse. It could get worse. And what's your uh, occupancy across the year? Probably around mid-20s. 20% 20 across the board. Ouch. <laughs> I am amazed you find it so funny. This is your room. OK. What's with all the pink? It's like someone threw up strawberry milkshake all over the place. My room has two levels, each as bad as the other. Oh. Everything looks like we're in a time warp. I mean, it's so dated. So, my room, how much did you pay to stay in here? Uh, three nineteen. Three hundred and nineteen dollars. Bloody hell. I'm speechless. <laughs> Thirteen-year-old decor, three hundred and nineteen dollars yeah. a night. <laughs> Can I ask you something? Fire away. Why do you think everything's a big joke? Because you're very critical. I'm here to get this place right. But what I don't understand is how blasé you are to the situation. I'm going to give you the truth. And if you don't like that, then I'm out of here. What do you want me to do? Get no, angry just, and punch nah. you? You want to punch me? Uh, you go well, first. Maybe I do want to punch you a little bit. But I can become physically very, very violent and have, in the past, people get hurt. There's your keys. John. John! You can't just walk away. Where are you going? Since I checked into Idaho's Roosevelt Inn, I've been unimpressed by the horrible decor. What's with all the paint? It's like someone's vomited well, everywhere. And the dated event space that smells like wet I mean, dog. The dogs actually are one of the highlights here. But the biggest problem here <laughs> is the owner, John, who seems to think it's funny that he's in is a disgrace. The only time he stopped laughing was when I confronted him with how bad things really are here. What I don't understand is how blasé you are to the situation. Here's your keys. John! You can't just walk away. While John hides from the truth downstairs, I'm going to have a close look at my room. It's like someone's ashes in an urn. An absolute mess. Ah, shit, no. That's what the rug's on the floor for. Just gross. Look at the dust on there. Most disgusting of all, oh, shit, is the dust magnet hanging over my pillows. <coughs> I hope I'll get a sense of what's really going on here from John's wife, Tina. Gordon, this is my lovely wife. How are you? I'm stressed out. What hotel were you running before this? I was running a dental office. I worked in a dental office. I wasn't running anything Dead. except my home. <laughs> so why would you go from sort of teeth to a hotel? Because he bought a hotel. <laughs> so you bought the hotel? It was my negotiation. You negotiated, you both bought it? Yes. Willingly or unwillingly? Unwillingly. I was very happy and content with the life that we had. So when John told me that we were buying the Roosevelt, I burst into tears. How much did you buy it for? 700000 700000 How much did you spend on it? We owe $1,100,000. Oh, so you haven't paid back the debt yet? No. To the bank owner. Oh, yeah, no, the bank owns us. God. We sold our house we had here. Cash in a 401k, everything we had. Oh, my word. Uh, where's your house now, what you live in? We live Up on in the attic. building. This is my hell. I have had oh. terrible experiences here. <laughs> Business experience, financial hardship, everything's wow. just falling apart here for me. <laughs> you seem serious, you seem joking. It's almost like you're playing at it. It is kind of an entertainment, though, <clears throat> to a certain degree. Uh, $1.1 million, that's an expensive entertainment. Well, yeah. I didn't realize it was this bad. How's the relationship? We were in a rough place. We went through marriage counseling, what was that, four or five years ago? Because of this business? Oh, yeah. And still working together seven days a week? Yes. 24 7. You're Sleeping a brave in the same lady. bed. I'm ready for something to change. I'm ready for anything at this point. I just feel like I'm. I'm gonna suffocate. I'm gonna get my uh, bag.
bag unpacked and I'll, uh, I'll catch up with you later. Thank you. Tina looks ready to bail out and all John can do is laugh. He thinks being over a million dollars in debt is entertainment. I think this marriage is in as much trouble as the inn. Clearly in denial, but more importantly, a man that won't man up and take responsibility. I've been told that tonight, the Roosevelt Inn is holding a murder mystery dinner. It's an event they host once a month. I have a feeling it's gonna be hard to forget. Head if you'll head on into there. I'll get you all checked in, ready to go. You look fabulous. We usually always have a lot of fun with this. We're going to continue to have fun with this. Are you addressing that for the ceiling? I play the part of Sherlock Holmes, old man. You're playing an Englishman. I am playing an Englishman, and I even have the pipe to go with it. I've studied this accent long and hard. In fact, mine is better than your British accent. I actually don't know where Gordon got his accent. He obviously doesn't practice it very much. Mine is far more authentic than his is. Absolutely, yes. Wow. While John prances around as Sherlock Holmes, I wonder what Tina does during these events. What? Oh, my God. What Lovely, have you got on? This is crazy. What happened this is, to you? It's murder mystery night, sir. It's gone from an inn to Little House on the Prairie. <laughs> I mean, honestly. It'll be my job this evening to cook your dinner. So while John gets to play Sherlock Holmes, his wife is stuck in the kitchen. Wake up, John. This is not the 1800s anymore. John definitely liked dressing up more for the murder mysteries because he's not in the hot kitchen. He's out there hamming it up with the guests playing Sherlock Holmes. OK. Right. Um, I'm not too sure what to make of all this. It's a little bit bizarre. It's slightly weird. I wonder if this event even makes any money. Is this profitable? It is profitable. Yeah, it's a lot of work. I mean, we made $200 tonight. $200 for all this work? And are they all staying over? Oh, no. Most of the locals, you know, when they come for a murder mystery, they usually don't do an overnight. Clearly, tonight's about feeding John's ego, not filling his bank account. Oh, well, that, that could explain it, then. No, no, oh, here now, here now. Oh, my word. Oh, I, I say. Oh, my fucking God. Hell, come to me, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, it appears the game is afoot. You know, their goal with the murder mysteries has always been to get people in, but if I'm not filling the rooms, what's the point? <sighs> and I would have called away with it, too, if it wasn't for you and your meddling guests. Yes. Oh, Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Well, there you have it. Brilliant of all of you. Thank goodness that's over. It's time to find out from John what on earth he thinks he's doing. Sit down, you must be shattered. I'm tired. I bet you are. Stick a fork in me. I was mad. Was it mad? Yeah. You're in the kitchen, busting your ass off, working hard to serve all those people. And John, you were out prancing around like a sort of actor. So this is the thespian thing. It's, it's an inn, it's not a theatre. But you seem to enjoy it. You have to force yourself to like doing it. I mean, it's on stage for three hours. And... The problems at the Roosevelt are elementary. Can I just have a word with you on your own? Two Certainly. Seconds. Oh, sure. This place is sinking because John refuses to take anything seriously. You love being an entertainer. Don't you dare tell me that I that is hard. It. This whole fucking thing was put together for your fantasy. Well, that's kind of what this night is. It is entertainment. We put on a show. You're pretending to be Sherlock Holmes, and upstairs, we're empty. You're in the shit financially. We're in ruins. And if you put the same amount of effort into filling this place, just one room booked tonight would have made more profit than the whole murder mystery and all that work that went into it. I mean, this is insane. And you prance around like some fucking idiot while your wife is slaving away in the kitchen. Do you have any care in the world apart from yourself? When you get a psychology degree. Oh, you when come, I get You one. come and tell okay. me what's wrong with me. Here we go. You obviously think you're a psychologist. Big denial again. No, I'm not in denial. I just don't know what you want. It's only your own fucking stupidity to why we're in the shit this far. Well, that is probably true. So then man up and act responsible. OK, I'm done with that. Oh. I'm done with that interview. Oh. Here, Sherlock. Over. No, no. Does that, does that massage no, your ego done. a bit more? Yeah, no, just talk to my hand, you know. I talk to my hand. Oh, what yeah. a have fucking a idiot. Have a You're good not night. 10 years old. You need to grow up and stop running away from the truth. Fucking joke. It was a rough first day at Idaho's Roosevelt Inn. Let me out. 
And last night proved to me that owner John needs to stop dressing up. Wait till I get going. And start growing up. You prance around like some fucking idiot. And take some responsibility for the problems at the inn. It's only your own fucking stupidity to why we're in the shit. I'm done with that. But John didn't want to listen. Just talk to my hand, you know. I talked to my hand. Oh, what a fucking idiot. Today, I'm going to have another go at getting through to him before he heads into the kitchen to prepare lunch. You're losing money. You're on this treadmill of mistake after mistake. We may be in an elementary school, but you're not a child. And I would really wish if you stop acting like one quickly. Is that possible? Sure. Show me what you got. Can you get to it? I don't want to cook for Gordon. I mean, first of all, he's got a huge ego of his own, so, you know, Nothing anybody else does is going to be any good. I don't even want to cook him a thing. How are we doing over here? Word has spread that I'm in town and the dining room is full. We're all having the same five course set menu cooked in the inn's tiny kitchen. There's a shrimp cocktail to start you off. Thank you. That's gnarly. That's ghastly. Wow. What the watery bits? What's that bit there? Um, that's probably the tomato juice. Unless it's condensation from the shrimp. Condensation? Was it frozen? Yes. Oh, shit. Yeah, they're warm. That's a sad looking shrimp. That's not a good start. It doesn't really taste fresh. Okay. I will take that for you. And everyone else seems to be hating it too. How can you fuck up a shrimp cocktail? Okay, here's Gordon's. Pecan crusted salmon. Is it fresh salmon? Frozen. Frozen. That has to be the saddest looking plate of salmon anywhere in North America tonight. The seasoning. It's dreadful. It's very dry. And... <clears throat> Would you like me to take it for you? Yes, please. I'm sorry. I'll take care of you. It tastes great to me. Well, I'm going to kill him. I just want Gordon to take a long walk off a short pier. I want him to fall into a very deep pit so he can't get out. This is pathetic. Can John cook anything? Can he cook an egg? He can cook an egg. Could you ask him just to boil me an egg? Sure a thing. Soft egg. He can't possibly mess up a soft boiled egg, can he? Soft boiled egg for Gordon. Okay, what? Egg? Soft boiled egg. What? I'm just like going. Wow. No egg cup. No. I'll make my own egg cup. Okay, now it's bells. <laughs> <laughs> is this really happening? He can't even boil a fucking egg. <laughs> fucking thing's still got feathers on it. <laughs> Could have probably cooked that another two minutes. <laughs> I am absolutely ready to boot Gordon Ramsay out of my inn. Fire away, buddy. Are you having a laugh at your family's expense? No. Big tall hat, big jacket, and you can't boil a fucking egg. You want a fried egg? You want French toast, too? How about some pancakes? What the fuck are you doing? You don't care, do you? I do care. You're a fucking joke. Those are what we refer to as fighting words. Gutsy thing to do, especially in a kitchen full of sharp knives. It has never been a joke for me, ever. Come play at my school. I'm the headmaster. You're acting like an absolute idiot. No, but you're no. in my house. That's right, I'm disgusted at your performance. Your big problem is you can't handle the truth. You don't like hearing it. You don't even know me. You know It's squat. a joke. Think about your wife. You're in to $1.1 million of debt. You're forcing her to live in hell. She's telling me that. I just think, over the last 13 years, of what you've fucking done, and not to you. To every else standing behind you. I'm tired of hearing that. I don't need it anymore. Screw it. I really don't care if he leaves. Fuck, man. I had a horrible night's sleep on the couch because I couldn't sleep in my bed. I really need a hot shower. Oh. Fucking hell, this water's freezing. I need to open John's eyes, but he walks out every time things get difficult, so I've got another plan. Have you got two minutes? We do. There's something I'd like to uh, show you, uh, both in my uh, my room. Oh, crap. What now? 
What's wrong now? Please, come through. Oh. There's the jury, and they're going to hang us. Clearly, you recognize some of your guests from the past six months. We do. I think feedback is critical. First impressions walking through the door. A lot of decoration. It's kind of outdated. Outdated, yeah. Too much. A lot Too much. going on at once. I'd like to go on to the food. Um, the general consensus? Disappointing. How was it? Yeah, it was. It, was too, it wasn't the value that we paid, honestly. Show of hands. How many of you would return and stay here again, please? None of our guests would return. I'm kind of speechless. I, I'm, I, uh, I didn't expect this. I thought, it was, I thought we were better than that. That's the most valuable information you've had in 13 years. I thought we were a lot better than this, and that, that is uh, a view that is changing. You've got to put yourself in the guest position. You know, you give me feedback on everything you've seen and experienced, but there's something I'd like to point out that none of you have seen. Please. Would you be so kind to put a pair of these on, please? Oh, my gosh. Can this just get any more terrible? I don't think so. Glasses on? OK. This black light is going to show up any bodily fluids. Let's start with the, uh, the pillows, shall we? Get there. like someone urinated on it. Absolutely disgusting. If you think that's bad. Oh. This kind of stuff hasn't been weeks. That's, that's years. Oh. oh, my. Absolutely hideous, horrified, disgusted, grossed out. Kind of want to go vomit. But you kind of trust that things are going to be you have the right to and expect you, that. And you have that. This is just as bad as it can possibly be. I mean, I'm disgusted. I. <sighs> How does that make you feel? It Dirty. makes me actually feel sick to my stomach. Uh, that I slept on. Glad I took a shower, but now I'm wondering about the shower. I'll let you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you all very much. Thank you. This is me. I mean, I've put my heart and soul into this. <laughs> it's just so embarrassing. <laughs> I had to do this because you won't listen to me. And John just laughs at every problem. I understand. I understand now. I'm worried about Tina. Hearing from the guests and seeing those stains seem to hit her pretty hard. Tina? Yes. Have you got two sets? Come on. I'm not here to hurt you, I'm here to help you. I'm just banging my head against the wall with John. Well, I know what we do is not perfect, but I thought what we did was better than that. John's got to get out of this bubble. He's an innkeeper, but he's constantly joking and shrugging responsibility. And now he has to start looking at himself. The thing that probably bothers me the most is John just refuses to understand my need to have my part of the dream. I don't like living and eating and breathing my work 24-7 and never, ever having a place to go that I can get away. But you're not happy? No. I'm not. <clears throat> At the end of the day, I usually lay down in the bed and I know this isn't what I wanted. Mm -hmm. And I'd leave here tomorrow if I could leave here tomorrow. I'm ready to just walk away from this and just forget it. I want to leave. I want to get out of here and go away. You can't give up. 13 years of being unhappy is not a molehill, it's a mountain. You have a voice. You've got to stand up. You absolutely have the right to be happy. I mean that. I guess maybe I needed somebody to say, you have a right to be happy. So that was good. Thank you. I'll see you later. OK. I promise you I'll make a difference, and I mean that. Last night, John's wife, Tina, was at a breaking point. But you're not happy? No. And I'd leave here tomorrow if I could leave here tomorrow. After talking, I realized how bad things really are here. And I promised to make things better because Tina truly deserves to be happy. Good morning, darling. Good morning. How are you? I'm, 
I'm here. You're here. <laughs> um, let's catch up, shall we? Let's get out okay. of this little cubby hole. OK. Um, maybe downstairs. I can't believe that John and Tina have spent $60,000 on a ballroom that they never use and smells like dog. Looking at this inn, there's a, a huge missed opportunity. The potential of this room is extraordinary. And this has to be used as a way to get people into the bedrooms upstairs and make money. Exactly. How often do you use this room? Twice a month. Fortnite, that's crazy. It is. Have you ever thought about employing a wedding planner to actually book this place out? I have one that I'm working with. I've been working with her for just about a year now. I don't pay her a salary. Right. It's her wedding. If we score a wedding, we both get paid. So yeah. she's motivated to sell it. For me, it's a big missed opportunity. Yeah, you know, once you've held an amazing wedding and you've got such great feedback, it just spreads. OK, if there's someone I want to see, um, I'll see you later. Okay. Yeah? All right. Thank, Thank you. you. This does not stack up. I'm going to go meet the wedding planner because there must be something that John and Tina aren't telling me. Hello, Hi. how are you? Nice to meet you. Likewise, where should we start? Well, you want to come on over and we'll have a seat? And... Shall we? Uh, yes, Thank come you. on over. The Roosevelt. Um, what would you say the key problems are? It's dated. It's, um, it's hard to sell 10-day-old bread. Right. It's, you know, brides are young, they're sophisticated, they're on their phones, they're seeing what the rest of the world is doing. You know, a big thing with selling the ballroom is the colors. That only matches a tiny percentage. You can either go burgundy, ivory, or navy blue, and those colors are so dated anyway. So Dark. It's terrible. And then you walk downstairs, and the smell. I had one girl literally say, I've got to go upstairs, the smell is going to make me sick. John doesn't strike me as someone that I'd want to put my wedding in his hands. As a host, how is he? We have had some issues um, last summer with him coming out and dancing. At the guest wedding? Yes. Like ballroom dancing or? It was more like Macarena type line dancing style. Oh my god. I mean, how awkward was that? It was mortifying. Oh god. If you just bear with me whilst I make some changes. <laughs> uh, because, I mean, you are the key to their success going forward. Would you give them one more chance? OK. I'm in. Thank you. Good well, to see you, too. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you, darling. Now that Misty is on board to help the Roosevelt, I'm going to make one last attempt to see if John is ready to change. How are you feeling? I'm not here to hurt your feelings, John, but you have a huge defence mechanism. I have an attitude. I want to help, but you are a very tough, stubborn, selfish individual to get through to. Yeah, truth hurts. It's not a sign of weakness to put your hand up and ask for help. And I don't want to butt heads. I don't want to butt heads either. Gordon, I've got two options here. I can close up the business, walk away from it, give it to the bank. The other option is, I know I've done this to myself. I've done this to my wife. Uh, I've got to find a way to get out of it. This has been your dream, your ambition, and she just followed suit. You're correct. You have one amazing, loyal lady there. I don't deserve her. I'm a pig sometimes, there's just no doubt about it. Yeah. Trying to change that. She's not the one that should be suffering because of what I did. And I haven't even considered that in years. Let's start making this place better. I need you committed. I want the help. I want to make this work. Now that John's finally turned the corner. I'm a pig sometimes, trying to change that. It's time to sit down with Tina and get to the heart of their relationship. I'm so pleased that we've got to a place that we can start making steps in the right direction. But this is a family run in, and you need your time out, and you need to cut your dear lady slack. You need to learn the importance of being a happy couple. What have you got to say? Yeah. We've been so wrapped up in this and everything we do that don't even know where to where to go with romance anymore. It's like I'm so self-consumed with all of this. Just the ability to just 
have a conversation with you, understanding my, my feelings. I have wishes and ambitions. There are things that are important to me, that are vitally important to me. You have to support that. If you're not prepared to support each other in each other's roles, then it's never, ever going to work. You need to be happy together. I want to know what your dreams are again. I haven't heard a dream from you in years. I don't even know what your dreams are anymore. I don't know what my dreams are anymore. <laughs> I've, I've quit dreaming. I want you to start dreaming again. Mm. And then I want you to share those dreams with me. Because I love you. I know you do. I told all my girls they were princesses. And you are too. I haven't treated you much like royalty. I do feel that Gordon has helped John appreciate me more and see what's going on inside of here should matter to him. Now that they're talking again, I want to give Tina and John a lesson in something else they've not done well for a long time. Wow. Cooking. In any inn, country, hotel, it's all about comfort. And what I learned immediately from you is that you're trying way too hard. You've got a shoebox of a kitchen that you can't swing a cat in. You should be cooking five course meals in there. OK. You're not a chef. No, I'm not. You shouldn't be on a billboard. I shouldn't be. A delicious home-cooked meal. That's all I'd expect to see. That's all I'd expect to smell when you come through that door. So I've put together a list of dishes for the whole week, something that you can cook in one pot. Fabulous. Let it cook itself. <laughs> really fabulous. Okay. These are my recipes. Uh, I'm proud of them. Don't start improvising, changing. Just follow them. They will work. Half an hour to get the chili on. Yeah. Fabulous. Sweet. Nobody comes here, John and Tina, expecting a five-course meal. The food was an amazing discovery that it could be so simple, so easy, so delicious. I'm glad that Gordon is in my kitchen. Tomorrow is a new dawn for the Roosevelt. And my goodness, are we going to turn the page. My team worked all night to bring the hotel into the 21st century. Now it's time to reveal the new Roosevelt Inn. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning Gordon. You've got a spring in your step, John. How are you feeling? Wonderful. Good. Let's go. Okay. Come in, come in, come in, please. OK. 16 rooms, 32 guests. This hotel should be full. Oh, Welcome nice. to your new honeymoon suite. Oh, wow. Oh, Holy oh, my wow. Oh. John, how do you feel? <laughs> this is incredible, Gordon. A honeymoon suite, <laughs> decluttered, bright, elegant. Oh. We were literally two centuries back in time with what we were doing in these rooms, and we are suddenly into now, today. It's amazing. Oh. John and Tina, I'd like you both to go upstairs. A room that will be great for room service, to have a bit of romance. Oh, this is just truly beautiful. Now, coupled with selling those rooms, the big asset that was underused in many ways was downstairs. Truly, that's been a huge disappointment for me. Come with me now, and let yes. me show you the new, stunning Roosevelt <laughs> wedding space. <laughs> oh my God. Hey, hey. I thought we had something that would be viable to help build our business, and it wasn't. It was dragging it down. <gasps> oh, good grief. Oh! Okay, this is stunning. This is amazing. Wow. Um, Absolutely oh amazing. Goodness. I love okay. the color scheme. This is stunning. Oh my gosh. Yes. This is the direction we need to be going in. This is the next step up. And I am extremely grateful. And I don't want to see a dog, a dog's hair, a dog's chew anywhere in this space. Understood. Now, this room should propel this business to greater heights. It has to be your biggest marketing tool. Because when you've got the wedding booked, the guests should book every room upstairs. This space and the revenue it can bring into the Roosevelt could definitely be the game changer that we've been looking for. I'd like to um, point your attention to those wonderful plates and all the glassware on the tables. That's a special gift to you worth $50,000. No way! Really? <laughs> You've now got, you know, a solid foundation to host the most amazing wedding. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, there's someone I'd like you to meet. Oh, my God. Okay. Please. Oh, this amazing. is just... You may recognize this lady. <laughs> oh, yes! Yes, baby! <laughs> Look at our new space! I hope Misty's going to give us a second chance. What strikes you now walking through that room? What's the first thing that hits you? 
It's just, it's natural, it's, it's modern, it's what the brides are looking for. They're sophisticated, they're young, this is what they want. And does it show sort of versatility in a way that it can be adapted to suit different colors? Absolutely. We can put any color in this room and it'll be wonderful. Yay! This is gonna sell mm -hmm. itself. How does it smell? It smells wonderful! <laughs> <laughs> now, here's the good news. She is prepared to give you one more chance to become Coeur Lens number one venue for hosting weddings. One more surprise, John and Tina. Missy's not just here to visit. The Roosevelt is hosting a wedding tonight. Tonight? Owners of the Roosevelt Inn, John and Tina, have come a long way from when I first met them. Personally. Because I love you. And professionally. I want to make this work. And I've just surprised them with a true test for their business. The Roosevelt is hosting a wedding tonight. Wow. Tonight? When Gordon said we had a wedding tonight, instant gut-clenching terror. You're going to be cooking, serving just simple, elegant food. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, good luck. Take you ladies up to the room. All right, go on in, ladies. Ooh, I like that bed. <laughs> oh, my dress. Guests are just starting to arrive. Hi. I gave John and Tina a couple of simple but delicious wedding recipes that they could cook in their tiny kitchen and that I knew the guests would love. This evening is going to be huge for us. You're feeling that, that really wound up sense inside yourself and it's like, holy cow. Donald, Nicole. As the couple exchange their vows downstairs, upstairs in the kitchen, John and Tina are proving they are there for each other when it matters. I give you all that I am. I give you all that I am. And you may kiss your bride. You're that side, I'm this side, and we go bang. And then we go bang. And then, so now we... Plates and hands, guys, yep. and downstairs, Coming now, so... plates and hands, serve it up. OK, ladies, let's go. Grab them and go, grab them and go. For the first time ever, the food at the Roosevelt is putting a smile on people's faces. Try and bunch them up a little bit. It just makes it look so much neater. Including Tina's. Breathe and talk and, OK, I've got this. Awesome. We're in a nice rotation here. John and Tina are a great team when they communicate properly. OK, good. And I think the buzz they get from tonight will encourage them to keep working on their relationship. How you doing? We're rocking along here. I love it. Plates are going away, this Steven. Is the it's the best thing I've ever had. Well done. OK. How do you feel? <laughs> Where's John? It. Well done. Oh, thank you. First time you've actually cooked. Yes. Yeah? From yes. scratch. From scratch. For an amazing wedding. Well done, both of you. Thank you. It's been a great night thanks to John and Tina's teamwork. You guys did it, even ahead of schedule. <laughs> You can do this. I'm really hoping that our future with Misty and, and our wedding business just goes through the roof. Time to go. I'm going to be a bit sad to leave this place. I think John and Tina have done a bloody good job tonight. And more importantly, I think the whole wedding has opened their eyes to the huge potential they've got here. Tonight, the Roosevelt is fully booked for the first time in years, and the inn is back on course for success. It's been a hell of a week. Yeah. Yes. Uh, tonight proved that you both can pull this off. Once we got the system going, I, it, it went very well. Stick together. All right, we'll do it, like Lou. You've got every chance now. Good luck. You can have a happy, happy ever after, let me tell you. Thank you so much. Take care of yourself. Thank you Do again. not sneak downstairs to that dance floor. <laughs> not even heading yes. in that direction. Night, night. <laughs> Thank you, Gordon Ramsay, for giving us this opportunity. This experience, obviously, is not meant to be easy, but in the end, worth it. So thank you very much. It was nice to say goodbye to him tonight. <laughs> and I look forward to seeing him again, actually.